to change your name. We need to to get through all the questions that people have. So I, I don't. I think the meeting may have been posted to end at a certain time. That's not going to happen. We're going to stick around and try and answer what we can. Um, again, just to reiterate, at least as of today, there is no decision that's specifically made on easterly access. We're still in process of reviewing the options. So Al is going to share um, some additional options beyond the the one that was shared in the previous session. That's also being explored and considered. Um, and then we'll just open it up to questions. And again, we we totally understand that that this project is not for everyone and that there are people here who 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 won't support this for various reasons. So but we're here to just listen, learn, understand, and give you information. Um, so again, if we could try and keep the conversation as respectful as possible, that would be really appreciated. And again, it's gonna get heated, I'm sure, at some point, but let's all just remember we're all part of the same community and all here to try and do what we think is best for Scarborough. So I'm gonna pass it to Al. Al, if you wanna just... Um, so I'm just gonna... Al Palmer from Goral Palmer, for those who weren't here previously, I'm just gonna highlight some of the items that we didn't touch on in the prior meeting. Emily, can you advance? So again, the three topics we're going to try and touch on are put the likely traffic impacts for the school project, the detailed overview of the improvements. I'm really not going to talk about that because that we covered in the last meeting, and then access road options under consideration, track view terrace, but also a, a new option that we're looking at relative to the cottages at Sawyer. Emily, if you could go to the next slide. Give me three minutes and I'll get to Better hand out. Mass. So again, this one replicates some of the other information, but indicates that we could have an access from four different directions. Emily, if you could advance again. The next slide talks about the access considerations for the downs. We'd be happy to review these, but they've all been discussed earlier. The trip generation is the next slide. School typically operates, or an elementary school typically operates a little bit beyond the peak hour of the adjacent street traffic. So elementary school starts at 850. The peak hour is more in the 730 to 830 range. In the afternoon, school gets out at 315. Peak hour is more in that 430 to 530. So an elementary school doesn't align with the peak hour of the adjacent street traffic. The highway capacity manual indicates a capacity of about 1,700 vehicles per lane in each direction for a total of 3,200 because you have to discount for the second lane. Uh, but to be conservative, we're looking at a capacity of no more than 1,000 vehicles per hour in each direction or 2,000. And currently, based on counts on Sawyer Road, in the AM peak hour, there was approximately on the east end by 114, 82 vehicles in the AM, 118 in the PM, 283 on the south end in the AM, and 216 in the PM. All of this information will be posted on the website, and you'll be able to access it after. <coughs> 
The next slide talks about trip distribution. From a preliminary standpoint, we had to look at something to start to develop the cost estimates. We've assumed 50% of the traffic would come from the easterly access Sawyer Road, 25% from the northerly access Payne Road, 15% from Hagas Parkway, and 10% from Route 1. As part of the traffic study, which will be submitted to the town and DOT after the referendum, that trip distribution will be refined and it will factor in the additional information that was discussed tonight relative to the busing, as well as the current parent drop-off information that Jeff referenced uh, that the school is tracking at this point for the current calendar year. The next slide shows the preliminary trip distribution in the AM peak hour. Again, all this will be posted to the website. The second slide is the PM peak hour. The third slide is the traffic impact fee. There's an approximately $500,000 traffic impact fee that will be paid for additional improvements beyond what we talked about at the prior meeting regarding the improvements to Sawyer Road. That is part of the project costs. And that is part of the pro project costs. The next slide, I'm trying to get to the cottages at Sawyer because I know that's most important. This meeting is really a first step in the traffic process. This project, if approved at referendum, will require a permit from the main department of transportation under their traffic movement permit process. This information again will be posted, but it outlines the process that DOT will use and the meetings that will occur and the opportunities that the public will have to attend those meetings and comment. So tonight is not the end of the traffic discussion. It's really just the beginning of the traffic discussion. In addition to the DOT process, there would be a planning board process that also will review traffic. The town historically retains a third party traffic engine engineer to assist them on the DOT process, but also to advise the planning board. So the DOT process is very detailed. This information will be posted on the website, but you'll have the opportunity to see where you would have interaction and be able to comment to the DOT relative to the traffic. And again, I'm trying to keep under five minutes. Next slide. Again, this is just the steps within the DOT traffic movement permit process. The next slide talks about the improvements we discussed at the last meeting regarding the improvements on Sawyer. That's the list. The next slide is the graphic showing the various improvements. Continuing, this is a slide regarding Trackview Terrace. The town is currently conducting a title search of Trackview Terrace. This is some information that was available. There are competing and conflicting information regarding the rights of way along Trackview Terrace relative to what the Downs has for a right of way, what the private way is, as well as the utility easements. This just kind of shows in red areas that may be owned by more than one entity, the areas in green, areas that appear to be in between those. Again, the town is conducting a title search that will influence the final design if this project moves forward. The next slide quickly shows a potential alignment coming through track view terrace. It shows the separate left and right turn lanes at Soy Road. There is a sidewalk on the left side. This alignment has been shifted as far to the north as possible to minimize the impact to the abutters on the south side of track view terrace. Um, but it was done while we're waiting for the title search. So it could be subject to change, but the intent was to try to minimize impact to the southerly of butters. And southerly is to the right as you're viewing it. The last slide is the additional option that John uh, mentioned. Based on some of the public comment that had been received to date, the town started to look at other options for the easterly access. 
As was noted, the purchase and sales agreement with the Downs speaks about an easterly access, but it is not restricted to just track view terrace. So the school site is on the left-hand side of this drawing. The white that you see in the middle is a project called Cottages at Sawyer. It's a single family and multifamily housing development that currently has only been initiated phase one, which is closest to Sawyer Road. Um, track view terrace would be down about where, just above Jeff's head, 114 is right on the, the right hand side of the sheet. So you've got the cottages at Sawyer, and then you've got the condominium development coming off of 114 is the plan on the right hand side. Those haven't been completed yet, so we couldn't use an aerial photo. So we had to piece together the aerials Where's plus the, the plans. Where the, school the school is on the left hand side, right there. The red lines, is that the- I'll get there, the, I'll get there. Oh, sorry. Mr. O'Leary, I believe is in the room. He is the developer of the cottages at Sawyer and the town had an opportunity to meet with him to discuss the possibility of construction of an alternate easterly access that would use a portion of his property and either connect to Sawyer Road or potentially connect directly to 114. In, it was blue, but I think it's really more purple, are rights of way that are part of the approved plans for those two projects. So those are rights of way that exist today or were approved by the planning board. In the case of Mr. O'Leary's project, I don't think the property has been conveyed to the town, but as part of the approval um, on his portion of it, it was approved by the planning board and a dedicated right of way in purple. Going down to Sawyer Road is a right of way that was granted to the land trust in 2018. And then there was a connection um, to the condominium development. So Actually, in Sawyer, where's track view on this? It's down about here. Down the screen. Off the screen. Sawyer? Sawyer is right there. So, so this is on the 114 end of soil. So 114 is right on the issue, or right edge, I'm sorry. Yeah, what Road, 114 is on the right edge of the sheet. So in red, we have sketched out a potential alignment. What might help people is the plot that's developed that's Preservation Way, isn't it? It's yes. Preservation Way. So the people yeah. can understand that they've driven down there. That's Preservation Way. It goes in. And in there, you're going to start to do your red lines. Go ahead. Yep. But we've shown there's a phase one of Preservation Way. Just let me finish quick. There's a phase one, which is what's immediately closest to Sawyer Road. And then a phase two in the back. Yep, I think that's Emily. We have shown an alternate alignment coming from phase two, connecting to the right of way that was approved by the planning board and potentially connecting to the right of way that was granted. Yep, and then down to Sawyer Road and a right of way that was granted in 2018 in the dashed red line not dashed as much as I'd like, but you can see a little bit different symbology. There's a potential connection that could go out to 114 opposite Maple. So Maple Avenue is immediately adjacent to where that red line would come out. This is something that has just really been advanced within the last week, um, but it's something that the town has asked to be explored to look at an alternate configuration it possibly could be developed in two phases. The first phase being con connecting to the cottages at Sawyer, coming down and connecting to Sawyer. And then a, a second phase, potentially getting out to 114. The second phase obviously impacts the condominium development. They have not been approached. That is something the town would have to do. It affects the land trust property. That is something that would have to do. 
And then I believe it's the Randall family who owns the land immediately opposite Maple Ave. So this is very conceptual, very early, but part of it was the town wanted to explore it because they'd heard of the concerns relative to track view and they wanted to make sure that all opportunities for an easterly access were explored. And maybe we should explore them before we vote on them. Isn't the yeah, vote in yeah, November? Exactly. Yeah, the vote yeah. Right. yeah. So that was my five minutes. <laughs> the election three weeks away. away. So let's, let's, let's go. Now we can go back to questions and answers. Again, we're happy to answer questions about Sawyer, as well as any general Q and A's about the school, we started at the front last okay. time. Let's start in the back this time. So, if you want to talk in the back, I'll, I'll stand up. I, I'm Felicity Kerr, and I live way the heck far away, and I we're closer to the Kate School than we are to the Oak Hill. I can't hear you. Um, I'll try yelling. Um, so you said originally that you did not explore certain parcels because they were not for sale. But at this point, you seem willing to use eminent domain to take an access point to, as track view terrace to the schools. So if you're willing to use eminent domain at this point, then can't you pick the best school site in Scarborough and just take it? So we, we did we did actually explore eminent domain as an option at one point. And from a cost perspective, it really does get a lot higher and it adds to costs. What I will say about the, the roadways and the, the issues there, we're not in a position where we have to take all properties and homes. I think it's 10 to 15 feet probably from um, some properties that the town would need to partner with those homeowners to figure out how we could build the roads that are necessary. Yeah, there's, there's a great word. It's very, very important to you that it's going to cost a lot of money. And you haven't put that cost into what it's going to cost. So in the 160 million, it does contemplate, um, there is a portion of the funds in there for purchasing property to support the roadways that are necessary. So it's really just the easements that exist today, as, as Al showed in track view, there are some challenges potentially based on ownership where we may have to partner with those homeowners or see if we can do something um, around there that we could try and avoid as much as we can on properties where we don't have to, to impact specific homeowners. So again, I think the town is committed to work with any homeowner that's impacted to make sure that we have a good conversation around what we need to do to make it work for them. Um, when it comes to Sawyer Road, you know, a lot of the, the things we need to do on Sawyer Road, those are things that we need to do today. Speaking of the, the light at the four-way intersection, that's a high crash location. So it's inevitable that at some point we're going to have to make a turn lane there um, and the state's going to require it. And we're going to have to do it. Um, if that happens, the difference of what we're talking about is instead of doing a 30 foot uh, right away, our turn lane, we might have to do a 45 foot for the school project. So <laughs> some of these things that we may have to do, we may have to do in the future anyways. But you're asking us to vote on a referendum and you don't have the final costs in hand because you have to acquire other properties for this to work. So it includes the total cost, the 160 million does include the need for the, the roadway acquisition. acquisition. So Almost six million. What about no, it's not it's not six million dollars. So the six million dollars is that's that's for all of the improvements that need to be made. Um, I don't know exactly the number in the budget that was allocated for that, but that is that is part of the 160. And the, the thing I will say is you know, what you're voting for is an up to 160 million. So that is what we're going to the public and asking for. As this stuff gets figured out, if it becomes more than what we're estimating, we're gonna have to do value engineering and figure out where we, you know, either have to adjust things for the school project or other choices that, that are contemplated in here to try and make sure that we stay within it. So we, we have the, the cost estimates, that's what you're kind of voting on are the cost estimates. And then as we go to bid, for the project because that's what happens afterwards like once we have approval by voters then we go to bid and once we go to bid we're going to get you know information back from from you know 
construction companies and everyone else who's going to tell us what they're going to offer to pay for. And that could make it go down and then we could have more wiggle room to do other things. So when it comes to when it comes to the option that was shared that Al put up as the secondary option, we're pretty confident that um, not including the Gorham piece, because that's that's a longer term piece, but if we had to do the Sawyer Road connection going through the cottages, that the costs are going to be relatively the same based on the current option that was costed out, which was the Sawyer Road and that roadway adjacent to Trackview Terrace. The right. bottom line, there is a allowance for land acquisition in support of traffic improvements. That's included in the 160 million. If the voters approve the 160 million, we can't go above it. If we need to find additional funds, we've got to take them out of some other part of the project. Yep, so let's let's go next back row. Sure. Yeah, Roman Yusefiak, uh, 39 Aslan Drive. Sorry, if you can speak up. A little bit. I'm sorry, yeah. uh, Roman Yusefiak, 39 Aslan Drive. This question might be a little bit off topic, but throughout your studies about traffic, development sites and everything else. Has one thing been taken into consideration is the uh, psychological impact of, and success, of anxiety of these kids going to these big schools? So I don't know if anything like that has been done, but what I can say, and this is as a parent- We're making decisions for the kids. Well, this is as a parent living study. through living through COVID, right? Children yeah, yeah. are very, that very COVID resilient. A, you know, uh, and you know, they're disastrous. They're, that yeah, that was a shit show. I yeah. agree. There has been certainly been a cost, but I can say, you know, the children have shown that, you know, they're 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 pretty capable of getting anything thrown at them. They don't they don't know <clears throat> at least the little ones, except what we show them and teach them. And so I think that's my barometer is like that that's you know, these new kids that are gonna be going to the K through two or K through three school. Do you have the degree in psychology? No. Okay. I'm great. just sharing my personal. So I'm just opinion, asking if the education board has done anything about it. Has been the expansion of what? that. <coughs> in the one of the um, one of the benefits of having um, a unified campus for K to three is that we have all of our educators together at the same location as well. Um, we also have some experience with uh, building community in a large elementary school with uh, Wentworth. <laughs> in grades three through five, which is broken into small learning communities, uh, four learning communities that are all colored. And that's really how the, the whole building has been designed. And, and so Scarborough has a real history of supporting kids effectively uh, in a larger elementary school, uh, our current third through fifth grade. And so um, it's a model that works. It's like a, a school within a school. So there's been a lot of thought to the design of the building and then also a lot of thought to how we currently support the needs of our students, which is um, through the pandemic and still after the pandemic, a huge, huge concern and something that our educators um, are really, really focused on the individual needs and social emotional learning um, and, and the, the overall well being of our kids. So there are a lot of benefits to having uh, our educators together collaborating. Um, just in terms of how we support and, and instruct kids, um, the unified campus actually does have some benefits. Um, so one, one benefits thing that's the so, teachers, not the students. Then. One so thing that's important. Students, right? You know, one thing that's important to note is that with the with the with the existing schools, the way that they are, um, take a for example, a child that has anxiety issues. Uh, the specialist oftentimes can't be at all the schools, so they have to go from one school to another school, which doesn't leave. Uh, oftentimes the, the, the time that needs to be spent with those students. And in addition to that, there is a shortage of the proper space for those treatments to happen. And, you know, for example, like a, a student needs a, a coach, coaching session that may be happening uh, in a room shared with several other students uh, because there is no other place. So, um, but that's a great, great comment. Any, yeah, but even in colleges, it's been proven that it's better to go to a smaller college where you have more one-on-one -on -one than it is in a big college, right? You get a little bit. So how is that applied into? Well, I think in this case, the one-on-one -on -one time in school three, actually whatever. goes down uh, in some cases because the educator can't spend enough time with all the students because of the, the dispersion, right? So there's three schools or four schools to cover. You may have maybe one or two specialists um, that have to float between all the different schools. So rather than spending time at the school, they're spending time in their car driving from one place to another to another. 
and they're they're able to to actually lower lower the student teacher ratio and then also provide um, easier access for specialists for counselors for kids who are working or uh, staff that's working with uh, students in small groups um, and i i haven't found a single educator in this town that does nothing but put their kids first period so let's 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 we have we have other people who want to ask questions so i'm going to go to the red red hoodie in the back uh, Heather Christie, 77 and 79 Sawyer Road. It appears when you put that intersection in at the end of Track View Terrace, um, my parents' property and my property are going to have a huge chunk taken out of them, more so than when you expand the roadway for Sawyer Road. When do we get to talk to you specifically? Because it's not going to be your standard negotiation. It's going to be a pretty decent talk, I would imagine. I would hope that if you're going to be doing something that drastic at the end of our property or in our property, that we would get to talk to you specifically because we are right there. You're going to be dealing with us, I would hope. So you have to be notified or talk to you. Yeah. So, in the mail. This, about this. But no, no one's come to our door and said, hey, this is what we're planning. I thought the town managers were instructed to get in touch with people on short So I, I personally went to those to the six homes that were right at Gorham and Sawyer. I don't know the numbers. Not Gorham and, and Sawyer. Sawyer. Oh, Tracky, Tracky, sorry, sorry about that. We're straightening the road out. That's gonna require. Yeah, so, 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 so we're going to yeah. A large shop of 77 and 79. I think, oh, yeah. Yeah, I may have been, by going fast, I may not have been as clear. We are not proposing a left turn lane into the, into track view terrace so we would not be widening along your property because my understanding is you're on the opposite side of sawyer We're on, the inside curve. on the inside of the curve we are not we are proposing a sidewalk along your frontage but we are not proposing widening of sawyer in that location so are you taking out the outside curve? how are you going to straighten that curve out as part of the sidewalk improvements, we're going to be doing some limbing of the trees and clearing so that you can improve that sight line looking towards 114 Gorm Road. But there's adequate sight distance if we do that improvement that you could see in both directions. So, I couldn't hear you because of the door. Um, what kind of signage are we putting in? Like, who's going to have the right of way and everything? So it'll be a stop movement on track view, turning on to Sawyer, just as it is today. So it'll be a hard three, like... It'll be a three-way intersection. Okay. Yep. And on your side, being on the inside of the curve, we're going to be putting in a sidewalk, putting in an esplanade, doing the drainage, basically filling in so that we can create that sidewalk, but not widening the roadway. So what was the very large red triangle? That's on the opposite side from you. That's on the track view, the track view side. That's the track view side. That's the track view side. Okay. So next, uh, sir, in the back. How many properties are you taking from people who have a toy Sorry, can you repeat the question? How are you being taken from the people on Sawyer Road? For, we're going to widen for, the road. There, there, there's no widening of roads happening. The sidewalk? The sidewalk, again, we're looking at the sidewalk in a number of different configurations. The existing sidewalk, widening it three feet, depending on where it is, it, it widens on either side. At the intersection of 114, to allow the widening that the lady asked about earlier and the sidewalk, there would probably be five to 10 feet of right of way that would need to be acquired. Physically, the land, the existing right of way would, would take care of the improvements, but we need land to do the grading and to minimize the impact of the lawns. I live at 60, so I have a road 60? Cotton, yeah, right across from If you're on the other side of Oakdale, nothing. 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 
All right, there's a question. Okay, let's let's go to the person in the way back and then we'll go online. Can you put the diagram up? Yeah, that might be helpful if we can Which show diagram? the do you want to see the the detailed one? Yeah. Oh, no. one? This one? Yeah. All right. In the back. Hi, my name is Julie Marquis. I live at 27 Imperial Lane. Um very concerned about the track view and that access. I think that's going to be detrimental to Sawyer Road. Um, I'm also very concerned, and as I picked up this pamphlet, I see no check mark on the soils and topography. Topography, topography, whatever, soils. My house is sinking, and it started when the Wentworth School was built, and then it continued drastically when this building was built. So I'm concerned about what all of this building in a marsh and building on wetlands is doing to our soil, and if it's not even been checked, what are, what are we doing about that? Because there's some major draining problems already in that area that have been far increasing in the last couple of years. So just because it's not checked doesn't mean it hasn't been looked into. It just didn't, ideally we would want no, you know, soil uh, wetness or topography. So that's why it's not checked on any of them, but Al can speak to the investigation. So again, checked would be that, the site doesn't require any ground improvement. All of the sites that are shortlisted would either require ground improvement or significant blasting. Is that, is that included in the 160 million? So in the 160 million is ground improvement beneath the building to address the loose seams and consolidating those approximately $4 million is part of the budget. So just for that building, though, not right. for the concerning areas that we keep putting cement into a marsh and we're not putting any other draining access. So when are we going to start sinking here? So the, the school site, the school, the school site itself, as there, there are a couple regulating agencies, one of them is the, the department main DEP. The other one in this area is the Army Corps of Engineers. The town and any project that's constructed in Scarborough has to comply with the laws that are established by those two regulating agencies. Um, I think there's also, you know, there's always a concern around, you know, impact to surrounding areas. Um, I think the, the one thing that's, that's good about this project, at least the location, is that it is removed a bit from, uh, you know, some of the, some of the more dense areas uh, in the town. I can't comment to the geology. I'm not a geologist. Um, I don't, you know, and I don't think there's a town study that looks at the geology of Scarborough and how it may be impacted by uh, various construction projects. Um, so, but appreciate the concern. Yeah. Any, yes, in the orangish yeah. red? Um, I just have a question um, for my own educational purposes to help put this into perspective as far as the traffic piece of increasing on Sawyer Road. So, and I'm probably gonna get the numbers wrong, but in the beginning you said there's like 88 in the morning and then it will increase to, and I'm sorry, I don't know how much you said um, with the new school, et cetera. 82 to 118. Um, yeah, that's the current counts. Okay. And in the column, the so under the trip generation in the AM peak hour, I can see this slide that is really hard to read. Um, there would be turning on to Sawyer at the unit at Track View Terrace, which is the location that we've studied right now. There would be an additional two way traffic three hundred sixty seven vehicles. Additional. 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 It would increase, like, so additional. Correct. On the easterly end in the morning count was 82. On the southerly end at Route 1 was 283. Okay. 
the road capacity is about 2,000 vehicles an hour in both directions, 1,000 in each direction. Is there, is there, is there, is there a, um, a road that we might be able to put into perspective that has that same amount of traffic that you're foreseeing with all of this change? It's a good question. It's a good question. I would prefer to be able to get your name and address and evaluate the counts that are available at various roads within the town so that we tell you exactly this is the closest road relative to the amount of traffic. I think it would be educational for all of us yeah. if we could see something. Like I think that. that's yeah, a, that's a very, good question. Very, that very runs very through good. a residential neighborhood, not just a road that just runs down through town, but the right. one that runs through a residential neighborhood. Yeah. We, we should be able to give, again, looking at the existing counts DOT has, we should be able to give you a number of different roads that would have that volume of traffic. Okay. Next question, uh, Megan. Hi, uh, my name is Megan Condry. I am that property with the red triangles. Um, I've made it clear that our property is not for sale, um, not because I don't want to contribute 10 or 15 feet to a school project, but because my husband and I bought a house on a private dead end road to raise a family. And the 300 plus cars you just said are going to be much more than that. They're going to be people cutting through to Costco. Because that's what I would do if there was an easier route. And it's, what, it's, it's what people do. And, and there's um, no reversing that. Once, once you, do you it. create the road, it's permanent. Let's be clear. And this road is for the downs, not for the school. Exactly. And I will add to that. I, I agree. How this looks, it looks like it benefits the business of the downs, the residences of the downs more than the school. Well, my house. They, yeah. they didn't want to cut through sawgrass. Well, I will add to that. <laughs> There are three entry points. You checked off the category of transportation because it you wrote that it has multiple points of access it, and those multiple points of access should be used. I have put out there that we are willing to sit at a table and talk about an emergency access going up our street. Our son will be the first kindergarten class going through that school. I've been a teacher through an active lockdown. That fear is real in me. I am willing to have that conversation about an emergency access only coming down track to terrace, but not a cut through to the downs. Everyone in this room can see that that's what it is. And one more point, there are seven people on the school committee. There are seven people on the town council. And I don't believe any of you live in this neighborhood. And that's significant. You live in the not Uh, in the back. Yep, you, sir. Right. Uh, Mark O'Leary, Cottage is this soil. Um, full disclosure, I've met with the town twice in the last three weeks. And a lot of what Al just presented was part of our conversation. But my understanding, too, was I'm going to traffic off Sawyer Road myself. That's my personal opinion. That doesn't mean it to anybody else. But to come from 114, that traffic was. Those buses, that traffic was already on 114. So if we brought a road from 114 route, and I thought we were going to the back of my property to, yep. to, to try to do that. Um, I've actually redesigned for Tom. Um, that took it away from everybody. It took it off of Sawyer Road, which to me, in our conversation that we had, once I got traffic counts, it seemed like a lot. And I, I think it's a starting point because once you get Main Street up and running, that's going to change things. Uh, you'll have people from South Portland trying to get there. So, I mean, it's, I just think it's too much traffic there, but I'll do whatever I can to help, but I think it needs to move on. Jim and then Carol. Jim. On your traffic count, is that only a school? Or does it take in the traffic that will be coming out of the downs onto soil? Currently, it's just the school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Nice question. Good, good question. Very good. As we pointed out, it's part of the traffic study that will be done after the fact. Yeah. Before the school is approved by the DOT or the town planning board. And after it's fait accompli. Before you're asking us to vote on it. Yeah. 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 One month we're voting. That traffic will be addressed. Okay. Too late. Too late. We have to have those discussions with DOT and where the driveway goes is going to impact that. Because if the driveway is at track view, it's going to change the trip distribution compared to if it's at, comes out by maple. through by Maple. That will change the travel patterns because somebody coming from the Blue Point area is going to go a different direction if the, they're going to use the Route 1 driveway to the Downs instead of using Sawyer and going out to 114 and coming back. So that cut through will change significantly depending on where that access point is located. All right, let's... The other question I have, the proposed road is gonna come out at Maple. Have we done the study of the impact on Maple Isle? No, again, we just started conversations with Mr. O'Leary two or three weeks ago. Those are items that need to be done if that option is going to be explored further. At the last meeting, I raised the same concern with the traffic lights. We haven't done any type of study as the impact of cut through traffic because of the traffic light going in at Sawyer 114? No. So we don't know what the impact is going to be on the other side of 114. And would you want us to take like you spend 160 million dollars well we don't have all the information i think we rushed this too fast we didn't get all the information tonight we're finding out there is a proposed budget thank you because you all mentioned it this is in the in the budget this is in the budget why hasn't that been publicized so we could all see it why? <laughs> yeah. We got the it manager is, here, we got the superintendent, we got the we did, we chair. Did. Oh, Why yes. hasn't that been presented to us? If we, we, we have that done. information, so if you're interested, yeah. I yeah. asked for it last so we, time. We presented, we presented it at other meetings and forums, but we can definitely make sure. If, again, we're not prepared to kind of pull it up today, but we can definitely <clears throat> make sure you get that information. Should be online. It is online. It is online. It's, again, it's, it's online. Yeah. I've been online for a month. And I have we can't find yeah. it. I know. We, I, I hear you. It's it's not the easiest to find. There's a lot of information out That's there. That's why it should have been presented in a simple form to the public. The ones that's going to pay for it. Not what the superintendent, the manager, and all, and the council. You know, we had 14 people have all the information, we know nothing, and you want us to vote in November. We don't have all the information to make a proper decision. What's going well, on? I, I would encourage- What's being hit? I, I hate would, to say that, yeah. but something yeah. is being hit here. I would encourage everyone, I would go on to the, um, the project site. There's a really great document called the Start Gear Guide that's probably the best place for you to start your journey if you haven't had the opportunity to dig in. And it does have good links to other information we, if you want to dig in deeper. The council so, has been asked almost every meeting, where's the budget? Where's the budget? And got no response. Put it in front. Yeah. You know, if, it's in, if it's public and you handed these out about this meeting tonight, why, is it? why, is, why it? is it not in... It's, it's available online, so I think on that. Why don't you bring it to us? If you're moving it open online, it's not accessible. About computers. You young people might know everything about computers, but senior citizens know this much. It should have been in a handout. The schools can send handouts through students to the parents. Why can't they send it to everybody in town? So we, we recently had the cost session, right? And so that all that information was there. So I think 
No, it wasn't. Not a detailed budget. All we got was a total amount. I asked at that meeting what the contingency was. And it's $16 million. And but you keep adding all this stuff. So how do we know? Yeah. So what I what I would encourage again, I, I would just say the start here guide on the project website is probably the best place to start. If they want to why don't you give us your information after yeah. Three yeah. the other question? I lost We'll come back to you. Hey, most of us are there with you. <laughs> so we'll go to Carol, and then I saw, I saw you had your hand. I think the council can take a pull that agenda item and not put it to the ballot. It's a waste of time. So we'll do Carol, and then behind Carol, and then we'll switch to online. Can we get the front row? We're, we're working our way down. We're working our way there. Jump to the online. We should have moved it. <laughs> you go behind it. Yeah. Carol? Um, Charles Bowe from Jamaica Mill Road. And uh, I'm going hey, to speak, speak up, please. Speak up. I've been going to these meetings each week, and um, I think I'm, I'm approaching this with an open mind. Um, we seem to be focusing all of our energies and potential costs on a site at the Downs. So I, I took it upon, I took a ride through the downs at, at a morning hour when people would be going to work. And a lot different today than it will be 10 years from now. Um, so I took a ride through the downs, came out on Route 1. It took a ride down to Trackview Terrace and saw a very peaceful community there. Mm -hmm. um, I took a, round, a ride around uh, three uh, primary schools, uh, kindergartens. And uh, one thing became obvious as if any of you ride through this town, all of our public buildings, our school center, they all have pretty much a direct access from a primary road. Yes. So my little trip through the downs, thinking about the parents and teachers, staff, the children that would be driven to school every day, at, at a busy, two busy times of the day, I came away thinking this is not really the best place to school. And, and, now, and I'm not a person that is suggesting not having a school to resolve our problems, but I personally don't think that's the best place for our children. Our children are kindergarten type children, okay? And so I think they belong on the educational campus that we currently have. And, and I'm sure there, have been, there can be many reasons why we can't have it there, but we have not exhausted, or I should say, yeah, we haven't exhausted any revenues or time or energy to try to get to the downs. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest that we try to put our kindergarten right where the middle school is now. And before somebody says, we can't get there from here, or there's only one way in and one way out, there is a piece of property that comes off from Sawyer Road right into middle school. So I think that with the technology that we have, the equipment that we have, the knowledgeable people in this town that we have, we can put the kindergarten where the middle school is now. Infrastructure is pretty much all there. Think, think of what we're doing to try to get to this site at the downs, okay? We were talking about uh, sharing costs on the roads, uh, increasing capacity through the downs so that our, bus, our school buses can go through. We're, we're spending money in the downs that everybody else will use, okay? We should put our children on an educated, kindergarten children in particular, Okay, in a location that's an educational campus. And we've got, I think, we have room in the downs at the, at the middle school. If you go on Google Earth and you plot out a little, how many acres you, at 20 acres, you'll find we can do it. We can somehow do it at the downs, but we're not able to do it in, on a piece of property that we own. If you go look up behind the maintenance shed, 
is 20 plus acres. Our, there. our, there's a nice piece of property there out there. So I think I think we we have to do justice here for our for our children. Bring them to us if, if we're going to move them away from the community schools. Let's bring them to a, an educational campus. Okay, we can do that. Because we've got the technology, we've got the equipment, and obviously we've got the money, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Lisa, this is um, Shannon. And Lisa and Al, are you able to answer Carol's question about the wetlands behind the middle school and why that was uh, vigorously evaluated and is not an option? Yes, as soon as he's finished. Pardon me, Carol, I thought you were done. I apologize. Go ahead. Uh, so, so anyway... My, my point is, we're going to rush, it. and, 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 and there, there are some using the term, there's an, there's an urgency now. I'm going to suggest there is not an urgency, okay? We've, we've got, if we take, if we take, if we lose this, I guess what I'm saying is, are you willing to lose this school because we picked the wrong site? Because that vote can go south because we're in the wrong location. Okay. Yeah. My, yeah. my, my thoughts on the wrong location. I, I, I'm just saying November can lose that school for you if the voters think it's the wrong site. So relative to the middle school, when the middle school was constructed, they used nearly every square foot of available upland to build the middle school and the fields that are adjacent to it. Anything on the what most people consider the middle school proper that is not developed today is, re is regulated wetland by the DEP and the Army Corps. The building committee looked at uh, two options. Could there be a new school built in that area? And is it a practical alternative? And then as part of the business case, I think they even looked at, could you, convert the middle school to a, a different school. There is not the area to support the building program for a consolidated school on the middle school campus. It will not get permitted by the DEP or the Army Corps of Engineers. So we cannot use, we cannot I, use the, the, uh, the areas. They do wetlands the mitigation here. all the time. I'm happy after this meeting to show you the plans from when the middle school was built and the wetland delineations. If you obliterate all of the fields, there still isn't enough room to build and then you have no fields. Okay, so I'll, I'll conclude with, uh, I, I personally, after riding through the downs and trying to envision 10 years from now, we're, we're dropping this school into a location that's gonna be a, commercial, very busy commercial area, and it's going to be a high density residential area. Okay. You, you all who have children uh, that are going to be driving these, uh, to school, they're going to be driving through a high density residential area. They're going to be driving through a commercial area. We as a town are going to have to spend extra money on the roads to widen the roads because of the school buses. We are just doing backflips mm -hmm. to get to the downs. Right. Don't I you cannot want to believe it's that there safe. isn't a piece Bloody of talk. property. I cannot believe there isn't a piece of property in Scarborough where, where there's a town father or somebody out there or an engineer, somebody that knows Scarborough that can't suggest a piece of a place where we can build. Well, I think I think just Charlie, you're, you're right right kind of summarizing here. the challenge that the committee had mm -hmm. as we looked at the 46 different sites. Like we we went out, we looked, we challenged, we questioned, we, we debated the same questions that that, that you're debating you yourself. Still have to ask it. Yeah, ten and I think from now, ten years from now, yeah. I'll do respect. Okay, mm -hmm. ten years from now, I would not want to be driving my child through a very busy location of high density residential and industrial. It's just not right. It can, just can, isn't right. I can see how you could, you could feel that way. All right, Miss? I'm Deb Damon, I live on Imperial Lane. Um, my question is, you're asking us to vote for 160 million. 
does that include Sawyer Road's expansion? I mean, is people out there, they're living over on Pleasant Hill. Are they expecting the referendum to include Sawyer Road? It, it's inclusive of all of the construction improvements and costs. Whether or not there's an alternative off of 114. Yeah. Right now, the town of Scarborough, when they go to vote, they're voting for Sawyer Road's expansion. They're, they're voting for, for the school. They're, they're, I, and I, I totally agree that we need help with our school. Yeah. You know, I go by Pleasant Hill, I see all the portables. My son teaches in Gorham, he's in a portable. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. But what concerns me the most is when I moved to the Imperial Lane, it was a nice neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Since I've been there eight years, my, my husband has grown up on Imperial Lane. When I moved in eight years ago, there wasn't hardly any traffic on Sawyer Road. Now I work over by Target, the Spectrum Medical Group, and there are people there saying, oh yeah, I go through Sawyer all the time to get to the main medical building, or I go through, I have friends who are living in the downs we're going to be able to get to Sawyer Road and get to Hannaford and get to here oh, because track view is going to be open. The lady that does my nails lives in Scarborough Down. She goes, Sawgrass, I can go through Sawgrass to get to Sawyer Road. It's, it's, and I feel so bad for the people on track view. I, I watched every meeting and this poor woman is like, I, I get it. You bought that property to have a quiet place. I know somebody that wants to sell their property and track you and nobody wants to even look at it because why would they? It's gonna be a thorough way. It just makes no sense. And it, what really concerns me is that the people in Scarborough are gonna vote for this project to include Sawyer Road. Well, it's just it's preliminary, that's yeah. it, it's preliminary. So it, preliminary, it, but uh, what, I, what I will say, it's what voters are voting on of yeah. 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 the 160 is six million dollars right. of budget yeah. set aside to create that easterly yeah. access. Yeah. And as Al showed tonight, both options today have a Sawyer Road. But, but let me ask you this: There was a budget for this building. Were you were they under budget or over? Over. Over. They over. 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 expanding exactly. this town? You won't so have you a say million. These are all the nice chairs and everything. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't accounted for. And you say you'll stay in the budget. You know, I work in finance. I know try to stay under budget it doesn't always happen and it's something that you can't not do because it wasn't in the budget that's scary i think that's you know the the way the process works that i said earlier we'll go to bid we'll get estimates that come back in and if if it exceeds the budget then that's when value engineering would kick in and why don't we the value school. engineer in advance rather than in the rear? Well, well I think until we go to, to actual to bid. Is that all scale. those different scenarios, all those different options, all the land was unknown. So how do you, why did you not include, now you must have had some idea. Maybe the land would have been a lot cheaper than seven million and you could have put that money into the school. Yeah. It just, it was a fait accompli. It I just think, doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would say that, you know, cost was certainly a big consideration that the committee evaluated. And as Al showed, there are a lot of other items that were considered beyond cost that ultimately led to the choice. We didn't cost out the, the cost of um, purchasing the land, but we did look at the cost to develop the land as Al showed. And so ultimately, we did factor all those different I options in mind. Well, where in that scenario did you put a cost on the people's properties and lives and disruption? Mm -hmm. yes. Never, never mind the children. I get the children. My son had an hour bus ride at Gorham. 
the bus driver had to wake him up every day when he got to finally got to the school or the house. But what about the people on Sawyer Road and all the people that are in that neighborhood? Right now, it's an accident. And you said it yourself, it's a high accident. And when I sit in there at that intersection. Never mind, I have to sit way back to see through the trees. And then I get yelled at from the people behind me because I'm not up closer to 114. I think it's the wrong choice. Oh, Sawyer Raceway. Sawyer Raceway. All right, let's, let's go online to individuals online. Emily. Hey, MK, we're going to give you permission to talk. Okay. Great. Thank you all very much. Um, so a couple of, I hate to say this, housekeeping things before I address my issues with Sawyer Road. Um, the access to these meetings, and a couple of people referenced the lack of information being shared around, is abysmal. And, and if you want to include citizens in a conversation about their own well-being and how their money's being spent, you should be really making a much more significant effort to get the word out instead of to making it seriously difficult to participate. Oh, and I, I beg your pardon. Um, I am AMK and I live on 114 around the corner from um, Sawyer Road. Um, I actually had to contact a town council person on her cell phone to find the link to participate in this meeting. So that just goes to show you how little um, effort's being made to include us. Um, and in the effort of time, because it's hard to watch all you people and be left to the very end, please make an effort to um, toggle back and forth between people who actually are able to be in the meeting and those of us who are just sitting there watching and have to wait our turn. Um, the third thing is it would be super helpful is if instead of just having a camera showing everybody who's at the meeting, there's a camera showing the people who are speaking on behalf of the project. Um, from this perspective, we only can see the back of some of your heads. So we have no idea who's speaking um, and, and who you represent. And having missed the beginning of the meeting, that did not help my case there. So um, if somebody has a pen and wants to jot those things down, that would be great, um, as well as the next few things that I'm going to say. Um, Another thing to consider for people who are joining on Zoom is if more than one person is speaking, we can't hear what's happening because it gets all jumbled up in our microphones. So it makes it super difficult to understand what people are saying when more than one person is speaking at the same time. On a more specific note about the Sawyer Road project in the schools, um, I access Sawyer Road frequently when I take my mother for a walk in her wheelchair, who, for whom I care 24 hours a day. And while there needs to be improvements to that road, I do not agree with adding more traffic to that road. I will concur with some other folks who spoke that there are already three other access points to a very large development. I honestly don't see why you have to tear up a residential quiet road to just put one more in there. Um, the acts, the um, proposal that Carol brought up, um, he kind of stole my thunder. I thought I was going to be original. Um, I too have thought about where else a school could be built. And my thought, Carol, had been, if they, if you had to relocate anything, why wouldn't you, like he said, maintain the campus? build on the present school campus, keeping those children as part of a whole, making it less difficult for the providers of those educations and counseling to have to get back and forth. And if that meant relocating, say, the athletic fields somewhere else and taking over that property, perhaps, or building a parking garage and taking over some of the parking areas. And I don't know if these are at all practical. These are just ideas that I've had. Um, taking over some of the land that is flat and not robust and building on it and finding other ways to solve, say, what could be possibly maybe a parking problem. Um, in terms of adding square footage or not being able to to that campus, at this stage, I kind of wonder 
Um, why hasn't anybody talked about building up from the present schools that are already on that campus instead of taking over any more square footage? I don't understand, especially in this day and age of three and 4D printing, if you're talking about construction costs or things like this, traditional construction is also perhaps an, a barrier that people haven't explored. The possibility of 3D printing or 4D printing property and being able to adapt whatever we need to the property that already exists for the campus. And just out of curiosity, and by the way, I wanna thank Megan and Zach for being there and running into us on Sawyer Road and letting us know about these meetings. Um, I'd be interested to, need to see a show of hands in the room of how many people are there because they they oppose this project. Amen. Whoa, yeah. look at that. Oh. Wow. So here's the thing, guys, okay? And this is this is what's happening over and over again. Is all everybody's had such great points. The the race, the race to the finish. How quickly can we do this? The non-consideration of our residents. Our council, those 14 people that people represented or said represent us earlier, they're supposed to be in the business of, of, of operating on our behalf, not fighting to get a project approved in spite of how the residents feel. And the ongoing practices that the town council and whoever else is part of this particular project have engaged in are preventing, prohibiting, and making it seriously difficult for any reasonable and facilitated input. So thank you very much for finally getting to me. I've been on hold for now um, over 45 minutes. I'm so happy that all of you are there and engage your neighbors and your friends to show up at the next meeting or send emails and state their opinions because otherwise they may not be heard. Thank you. Hey, is there anyone else online? Yeah, I just, are we gonna, is Lisa or, or someone going to respond to um, AMK? If not, I'm happy to, I just wanted to check on in. On the building up piece? Yes. Uh, yeah. you were no, I can speak to the building up piece. So the, the existing K2 schools were looked at for that specific reason. Um, the way that they are currently structured, you cannot build them on top of them you would have to actually build a superstructure up and over them, which is really expensive. Um, the, How expensive? How expensive? I don't have the exact yeah. amount. Oh, $60 million exactly. dollars expensive? I, we don't know. I'll do we don't know. We didn't do the work. You're not letting me answer the question, sir. I'll do respect. I don't have the exact figure with me at this moment, but we can provide that. We have done it on a recent school. It is very expensive to do, and that's just talking about going up and over not renovating the existing and expand, expanding for all the space that's needed. Um, we also, the, the when you look at schools expanding up after they've been built, you have to look at it from the beginning of the design. So a lot of schools that are designed look at creating the structure to be able to receive future floors later dates. Those schools were not, um, the new school is looking or has designed into not even looking, they've planned for where those future additions would go if needed. So continuing to try to have the forethought for any future schools that they can be expanded. So let's let's continue Q&A. How can we say we looked at all these alternatives, but she says, well, we've got another school we've looked at this, but we don't know what it is for our schools. How can we say we financially analyze this work when we've got another school we did it for but we didn't look at it for what it would take to do to our neighborhood k-2 schools in the business case it looks at the expansion of the existing three k the three k-2 and how much of a fourth school would need so that that option is out there mm -hmm. it's in the business yeah, case yeah, you can look at it in the business case. so it would in, in order to do in order to have enough capacity, right? So say, yeah, utilize the three existing schools. You can't build enough space in the existing three schools. So you have to build, you have to renovate those three existing schools and build a fourth school to get the capacity. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, but, but you're going to build a much smaller fourth school. It's, it's but rather than double. If you look at, you, you have to look at the individual cost of. So you have to renovate one. You have to move students out of the one that you're going to renovate, right? So you renovate that one, build onto it. Then you have to move to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. That takes a yeah. very long time to do. Yeah, it does. Guess what? You know, and there's a lot of money. the cost is far greater than a consolidated so school. So that plan is 230 million more, and it's in the business case. Yep. All yep. the information's there. Well, why aren't we looking at the 20 acres, rough, roughly that Carol referred to, right down here behind the? We do have people that have their hand up. So yeah. Let's yeah. Well, I'm happy to listen to this. Like, if you want to answer his question, I'm happy to go after them. So that's we've got 20 acres, at least 20 acres. I'm not a surveyor, but I scaled it very quickly on my computer before I came to this meeting. Where right down the hill here behind the maintenance sheds. Most of it must be town property. Right down where the skating rink is. The skating rink, wrapping around the middle right. school. Yeah. Yes, there is an excess of 20 acres. In excess of 19 of it is wet. Mm -hmm. But they do wetlands mitigation all the time. As a town, we do it. You have to demonstrate that it's the least environmentally pra damaging practicable alternative. You will not get a permit for 19 acres of wetland impact to build this school, even to mitigate the wetlands someplace else. Correct. Right. And it's all and it's and it's and it's all wetlands. There's no buildings. All right. So let's let's go to the back. All right. I'm Alicia Thompson on Herbert Drive, and you guys. So when Wentworth was built. It was positioned in a certain way where it could be expanded. Was that option even thought of? And like moving maybe the Six. second graders to Wentworth or the sixth graders to Wentworth instead? Or how do you, like, is there any way that you could just do that instead of spending all this amount of money ruining the road I grew up on? ruining property of young families like can it be expanded has that been visited there is some expansion that was built into it there's not enough capacity within that expansion to receive it. could you build up on it no it's not designed nice there's nothing there now all right look, we're coming back to the front i'm gonna we'll, we'll do the very front because you guys have been waiting patiently so why don't we start with, with you ma'am Okay, I'm Janine Durant, and I live on Mulberry Lane in Juneberry, right, which adjoins Sawyer Road. Uh, my question is, uh, the election is November 7th. There's early voting now. As I look at this, the easterly access, which would be off a of track view, that's set in stone, right? So if I go to vote tomorrow, I'm voting on that. Is that right? Is that set in stone? Or how do I know when I'm voting on? It's the only contract that they have. So, so, the, so what am I voting on? So you're you're voting on up to 160 million dollars that allows for construction of a school uh, of 140 million, four million dollars of middle school renovations, seven million dollars for land acquisition, and then the remaining. Fourteen million dollars is approximately off-site traffic improvements that we're budgeting for right. this project. So and that, that, that includes the easterly access, right? That would so if I go and, and I vote on that project that's on that's on the ballot, which is early voting, I can vote tomorrow for it. Mm -hmm. I'm voting for the Sawyer Road track view easterly access. You're, yeah. you're voting for the easterly access. easterly access. That amount. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I, thank you because I know how I'm going to vote, and it's going to be a no. No. Yeah. All right. But. Uh, yeah, um, schools aside, when did the town first discuss acquiring track fields? So, when it comes to the negotiations for the option, I would say starting in January of this year was when conversations started. And then we came public uh, in the first week of May. So, that first week of May was when we had issued what we call a letter of intent that outlined preliminary terms, including needing to create access off of Sawyer Road. And that's um, the first time you talked about acquiring it. So how come back in 2019, you can find maps of the downs, including track returns? So, John, I think you gotta explain the um, that easement 
Yeah, Tom, Tom <coughs> Drake is about to chime in. Because I understand that uh, almost 50 feet of uh, ownership or right away, we're not quite sure what the legal status is, uh, conveyed with the original, it was part of the original Scarborough Downs property. And so it's existed for, I don't know how long, 40, 50, 60 years. Up, sure. The question that had to do with the history of Trackview Terrace. Uh, that property was owned by the successor, the, the, the original owner of Taffer's properties. Um, and I don't know when it came into their possession, but it, for at least modern history, 20, 30 years, it's been part of that parent parcel. So uh, I think the council chair was correct that we uh, uh, really were given the request, if not directive, from the building committee that they like this site, but they really insisted that there be easterly access. And those conversations lent themselves to a conversation with uh, the Downs property owner, and they have offered they have offered that up. So that's part of the mm -hmm. consideration um, at this point. Uh, we're not paying anything for that. And at this point, if we don't choose to use it, we, you know, we won't own it. We won't have any interest in it. Is there anyone else in the front row? Yes. Well, let's let's get to somebody who hasn't spoke yet. So, gentlemen, I have a question. I'm writing for our very late. They were asking us to vote for 170 million dollars, which is supposed to include all the roadway work and all this other land acquisition. So, can you tell us what the exact cost is going to be when you have the 30 year? cost of financing this project yep so on on the actual bond language there is a portion that outlines the actual total cost in the 30 years including interest and it's about 277 million dollars in the next 30 years so really we're looking at 277 million dollars mm -hmm. not 100 so over the I next mean, i'm not going to be around in 30 years, I mean, <laughs> one year, I get a couple more years, but you know, I, I think the kids going in the loan pool are going to be paying for it 30 years down the road. I, I you're not including that in the voting this coming week or this coming November. Yeah, that, that information is clearly on the ballot question itself, so you'll see that before you cast your ballot with the yeah, total it estimated be, cost. It should be live print, not down the little down. The it's uh, center of the page. I, I think you'll see it fairly prominently. All right, Megan. Sure. I've shared how we're involved in this and where our property is. We are just living under a dark cloud right now. So obviously we are campaigning. No. Um, I looked at the school board's new goals that you all just set for the 2023-2024 school year. Goal number one for the board is to build a new primary school. And the only action item listed is to get the referendum passed. The land option agreement does not expire until December, 2024. If we wake up on November 8th and this town said no, am I looking at another year of fighting this? Is it gonna yes. still be your goal or are you gonna change that goal to reflect what the voters have decided? We, can I take this one please, John? Yeah. Um, this is Shannon Lindstrom, the the school board chair. Um, to an the short answer is we are going to have to still come to the table with a permanent solution. The problem we have is that this overcrowding at our three primary schools and our middle school has been ongoing for 10 years now. So if this board, this the current school board, if we feel very strongly that this is our responsibility to address this problem right now. So all of the, the questions that you're asking, the very, very good questions that you're asking, we have been tossing and turning and playing with those numbers with the building steering committee in various forms of this board for 10 years. So we are at the point now where if this school um, passes in November, it will go, it will be built and open up in starting the school year of 2027, 2028. That is the year we are expecting an increase in K through three students of 250. That is the size of one of our primary schools currently. So that many new kids are going to be coming to Scarborough. So a no vote in November, if you wake up November 8th to your, to your scenario and the school has not passed, then what will happen in the short term is that we have to go back and we have to figure out a short-term solution 
for those kids that are coming while still looking for a long-term solution. So yes, the school board cannot change that goal. I, I don't foresee the school board changing that goal because those 250 additional kids are still coming to Scarborough. We still have to find a place to house them. I, I, to, answer your, to try and answer your, your, your specific My question. question about is, is the school at the downs, is that going to still be the goal or are you going to reconsider what the solution is? I don't disagree with you that there's a solution that's needed as I mentioned, our son would be the first kindergarten class to go through whatever solution you go through. It's important to us. We're, we're school supporters. I'm a teacher. So I, I hear what you're saying. What I'm asking is, are we still looking at this fight of, are we losing our load? Am I living on an intersection or not? I think the, the answer would ultimately be, if this fails, we really do have to better understand from the community why did it fail? Was it because of the site? Is it because of the cost? Is it the solution itself? And I think ultimately that information would have to then inform what our next steps are. You know, what the option does allow for us is to retain that site at the price for at least through December, 2024. That doesn't mean we have to continue to execute that option if, you know, the feedback from the community is that's just not the right site. So again, I would say we, I won't know the answer until we have the time to engage the public in a more thorough process post ballot to understand like what was what 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 didn't work about this solution so that we can work together as a community to come up with a solution that would pass. And uh, I think and can I can I answer wait a minute can I finish okay. can I add to that for Megan's um, question. Um, I, I think I, I want to be clear that the school board's goal is to get a school and to pass a referendum, to your point. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that the school building committee, the, the committee is a part of the board, is a committee of, of volunteers, community volunteers that is a um, board committee. They are the committee that has been charged with finding the appropriate solution for Scarborough. So I think to specifically hone in on your question, if you wake up November 8th, that to John's point, there'll have to be some looking, some introspection, what is the best way? But then ultimately the biz, the building steering committee will have to, will be that group that will come forward with another long-term solution, whether that be the downs or whether that be something else. And, and I would just add, it would be wonderful if, if that does happen, that people come and show up and help us come up with that solution. So I would, I would encourage everybody who's here to continue to show up to our meetings, to continue to talk to us so that we can hear that feedback and make sure that we're, we're coming up with the right solution. I'm going to go to the orange again. She had her hand up first. Um, sorry, I didn't say this before. I can't change the lip, the lip street. Um, I, I do really appreciate uh, being here and being able to hear all of this. I do have a few questions. Uh, well, first of all, the questions that are being asked this evening and that you said you were going to get us those answers, for example, the budgets, um, as far as my scenario, where will we find those answers? Where, how are we going to get those answers? My suggestion that I will suggest, <laughs> because a lot of this is, is, is online, what we can maybe do is do like a post FAQ with maybe some links to more specific things that are available. So someone's tracking the questions yeah. and they're going to be. I'm hoping someone's solid. tracking the questions. I've been taking notes, so I have some notes, but we'll have to combine. But I, I, we will, we will try and do our best in maybe the minutes of this to post the document that either answers the questions or gives the links to where those answers can easily be found okay. online. And I the other thing, sorry. I do have um, just a couple more things. I, you know, when I moved to Scarborough eight years ago, I was so excited to be in this quiet neighborhood because I can't afford a larger house by myself being out further. Um, so it is disappointing. And I'm just going to say that it is disappointing that it's coming to this point that someone on middle class, which is now no longer middle class, has to deal with this. and. You know, I love the community we're in. Um, so it is disappointing that we're here to discuss this. Um, the other thing that I, I will say, just as hearing what, you know, we were talking about the absentee ballot, it's disappointing that this was the first communication by mail that I received to come to a meeting. And then, yeah, we have an absentee ballot that has this vote out right now. 
um, it doesn't say a lot for the planning. Um, and, and like I said, it is disappointing that we're just getting to this part now when we should have been here all along <laughs> being invited to these meetings, not just, hey, read this in the newspaper that's free or check out our website for the older population of our neighborhood. It's, it's not something that's particularly feasible for them. Um, so that's, that's another comment I wanted to make. And then one more, the, the scenarios of the different 46, 47 sites that you visited, is that on your website, the ones that you went to? We can add that to the FAQ so that I'd we can like make that easy. That. Yep. Okay, thank you. It's, yeah, and just a, as a follow up, um, I, I feel confident speaking for everybody on the school board side of the house, and I'm sure that um, I, the the town council as well. We are absolutely happy to sit down and and walk with you through the website and show you where all the information is. The 46 sites is already on the website. Um, there is a ro very robust FAQ that um, document that John has spoken to, but I will also acknowledge that in an effort to be fully transparent, um, which is incredibly important to this board, that website is chock full of information. And so when you first are going to it, it can be overwhelming, right? It's a lot. It's a lot to try to um, dive through. Um, if you go to the scarboroughschools.org website, um, all of the board number um excuse me, all the board members are listed there along with our phone numbers and our email addresses. And again, we would be happy to sit down with you and walk through any of the material you want. Um, and once again, my name is Shannon Lindstrom. You're welcome to email me. Um, we can set up meetings and appointments and get that accomplished. In the, in the back in the orangish pink. Yep. Hi, my name is Karen Smith and I live on Phillip Street. I just like to read when we were uh, trying to build the Wentworth School, that it, it says we spend a lot of time planning and saying, let's not build a school just for the sake to build a school. Let's build a school that can grow with the community. Mm -hmm. You position the property with room for expansion if necessary. Is it not now necessary to do that? I'd like to say I've been in Scarborough for 30 years mm -hmm. and all of the things that we have spent our money on here the new police station, fire station, a city hall, two new schools, a track and field. When does it stop? When do you take stop taking our money? Mm -hmm. Ooh, Push us out of town. Very good. All right. Neil? Yeah, I guess no, I could. No sorry. Response. Oh, I'd like an answer. No. Oh. So uh, okay. what, I, what I can say, what I can say at this point, um, at least in terms of like financial planning and, and investment decisions, every year we go through the budget process and we have something called a CIP, which is our um, essentially our investment plan. So that document is what we use to guide us year over year in terms of what investments may be needed that includes big projects. I would say what's in the pipeline right now is a potential community center. So that's something that, you know, in the future. Yeah, well, I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to answer your question. We gotta get back to bare bones, only what we need for now. Yeah, well, all of that's in our CIP and any of these things that are these big costs, anything that's over $600,000, that goes to the voters to ultimately decide. So that is your but how about all the little stuff you guys vote on without us? The money that you guys were spending without our say, and then some of the things you guys let us vote on because, well, mm -hmm. you want more money than you guys can slide under the table. I'm just saying, it's hard to be here knowing that my husband grew up in this town. My kids grew up in this town. I moved to this town for the better sake of my children. And now we can't afford, my kids can't live in this town with their parents and grandparents. They have to move out of town to, af to afford to live. Not right. Yeah. Not right. Affordability, affordability is definitely a challenge within this community and something that we definitely need to- It's like you guys don't, we you know, sure I, sure I, I, build, I work for a nonprofit organization where I get paid through Medicare and the main care funds. So if you can imagine, my pay has not increased in the 30 years very much since I've been here. But I tell you, all the things that I've paid for 
all of you guys, all of this new furniture. Wish list. Right. I have a wish list. I'm just saying. All right. In the green. John, you, you, you gave me. Yeah. Well, I call you? Okay, Neil okay, first. Got, I've got two yeah. two observations. One is, assuming this doesn't pass in November, I would strongly encourage whoever the powers be start from square one. I, I've looked through the list of who the building committee members were. Most of them were either town staff, school board staff, school board members, town council members. And the last count I got, there were four or five citizens. I, I think you need to clear the slate. Okay, yeah. you need a new architect who's going to take a new look. You need a new engineer who, who's not in a conflict of interest situation to, to make assessments on behalf of the town. Okay, you need some input from people who are sitting out here, not who are predisposed to go with the way the administrations want to go because for whatever reason. My other observation or my other question is, is I'd like to know how much taxpayer money between the town and the school board is being used to finance and fund the vote yes campaign. Oh, oh, oh. John, can I take I'm this? I'm answer by Friday, if I could. I could give it to you right now, as a matter of fact. Um, but to answer your first question, we would absolutely love, I think John mentioned this earlier, but we would absolutely love to have anyone in this room join. There is a spot right on the website for you to, to Say you're interested in joining us and we will reach out and absolutely add you to the committee right now. We would love, absolutely love to have you. Um, the second piece of your question is when we first went, when we, the building steering committee um, came to the school board, the school board went to the town council with a recommendation for the building. The first directive we got from town council was to hire somebody to educate the community because the community at large uh, did not understand what we were asking to do. That was the perspective at the time. And so that is what we did. We hired someone not to funnel, not to fund a yes campaign. They're actually, the purpose of that hiring was to get education out to the community so that the community could then make an informed vote, an informed choice, so that they knew what was coming. Okay. Um, I think the yes vote that you're talking about, the posters, the things like that, that has absolutely nothing to do with the school board and everything to do with a committee that has formed very similar to other political action committees in town. What's the total cost of the program? So let's, let's go to Green. Yes. Larry Hart, Road 5, Coley Drive. Going in a different direction. No surprise to the folks at the board of the board. table tonight. It's a money question. We're tripling our debt. If I triple my debt, I'm going to spend a lot more next year. Our town council says, oh, it's going to be just a small increase. I don't know how we triple the debt, and yet it's going to be a small increase. I also don't understand why we're only going to pay interest on this for three or four years. If I do that on my personal loan, is that going to cost me more or less in the long run? It's going to cost me more. I will show that I've paid less next year and the year after because I'm only paying into this. And that's the way this thing seems to be set up. Um, so in transparency, we've got a statement here, total cost. A home assessed today at 400,000, an average tax bill may, may increase by $200 more per year to support the school. Or simply put, approximately 50 cents a day on a property value. Uh, 400,000. Do you stand by that statement? And does the, the town manager stand by that statement as being accurate? Does that include the interest in yes. on the one second? And will you commit to the councils all the way out 30 years into the future that they won't take any actions that drive it above that 50 cents a day? The answer to that is no, you can't do that. You can't control what a town down the road does. And plus, your analysis is flawed. So we to, to get to get to that, what, what the town did is we developed a robust um, financial model. It was something that started last year when the library went to bond. And then this year we went to two third, third parties to get their review of the model. Um, it's actually on the town website. So you can actually go in and type in your home value today, your assessed value, not, not what it would sell for, but the assessed value and see what your individual impact would be. And what's in that model will show you essentially 
over the 30 years, if you stayed in that home over a 30 year period, what your total costs would be in that time period. Um, what we did to get to that number you're, you're referencing is we looked at the, um, just the school portion of the, our, not just the school portion, but essentially the model has assumptions in it that essentially allow us to get to that specific number, Larry, that, that you've quoted. Yeah. And so that is what the model is producing. That model is saying, you know, over the time period that's projected in that statement, it's essentially an incremental increase to a taxpayer of $50 for every $100,000 of assessed value. Okay, and we hired a, a third party to review that, mm -hmm. correct? And that yep. was Barry Dunn? We had Barry Dunn and we had an organization called GP Cobb look at it. And Barry Dunn um, reported out in a written report and they said in there that the, the assumptions made on a $400,000 house was best case scenario for 40 years. That's not a conservative way to, to so, figure out the- So some of the things, of house. like the model, like we could, we could talk about the model, the, the issues with the model, the yeah, challenging well, is that, assumptions. Is that, a, is that a true statement? From well, I, I will say what Barry Dunn did in their report was they looked at our assumptions, they looked at the sensitivity of some of the assumptions and directed the town to go back and revisit some based on our, our experience working with our finance director and people who have very much um, an understanding of the town because Barry Dunn does not work for the town. They don't know the town. We gave them a model and said, look at this model objectively and tell us what you think. And that's what they told us. And then through conversations with finance director, our financial council, and, and people who understand Scarborough, we felt like the assumptions that were in there were still reasonable assumptions. We did some sensitivity analysis to say what would happen if the interest rate went up, if tips changed. And so that information was actually done and looked at. What I will say about the model though, and this was something that the council recently did where I feel like it, I would say it's still slightly conservative is we're, we're in process of updating impact fees. So impact fees um, can be assigned to new capital investments. And so if we update our impact fees, that will actually offset the contribution that would have to come from existing taxpayers. So that model does not uh, incorporate the fact that um, if those impact fees are updated, as we discussed, 22% of the project of the 277 million is actually going to get paid by developers. So those are things where, again, we, we tried to do our best to give a number to give to taxpayers to have that in their back pocket so that they can make a choice. It's not 100% accurate. I don't think we could ever create something that's 100% accurate, but it's it's a reasonable assumption at this point to look at um, what is included of, of that $50 for every 100 thousand in assessed value to say that could be the impact here. We know when we hire a consulting firm, they're working for us. That's in the back of their mind. They want to be hired again. And so they try very hard not to say anything really strong. And they they stated that the four hundred thousand dollar was a best case scenario for 40 years. They didn't they didn't just throw that in there. They they're very careful with their choice of words. And nowhere in that book in that report does it say they approved the model or agreed that it was correct. They say, Carl, what I, what I would say is that I think the model is an honest effort and a very tall task. Um, but using best case scenario for 40 years, an estimate 10 years out is no good, Tom. You know the that. model is open sourced. You're free to go in and, and, and put in your own uh, assumptions. I think we have very defensible and, and very good rationale for the model for the assumptions. And so we can triple the debt and it's going to have almost no impact on us. Yeah. You're not going to pay any more in taxes. Don't worry. That's not, that's, not, that's not what the model suggests. Uh, oh, okay. All right, let's, let's go to someone who hasn't spoken yet. So you, sir? Yes, um, I'd like to echo the concerns that people had um, over the increased traffic on Sawyer Road. We live right on Sawyer Road, so of course we don't want that to happen. Um, but if it were to happen, what are your plans uh, to at least slow down the traffic or other improvements that you can make to help mitigate the effect on us? So as I mentioned earlier, right now in the budget, we have three raised speed tables proposed, basically a raised crosswalk. If you have driven down Stevens Avenue in Portland and you hit those raised crosswalks, something very similar to those. 
they would be at various locations, potentially drain it, potentially track view if this is where an access is located, potentially preservation. And those are intended to try to slow down traffic to mitigate any of the existing concerns relative to speed. It is an unposted road current. So that is something that we had probably also discussed with the town is posting of the road. You mean it's not Can got I, a speed limit sign? Correct. Can, Can I, I ask a speed one question? Sorry. Um, let, no, I would like to get to some other people who haven't. It's not the same issue. Well, I, I would like to, we'll get back to you next, Jim, but we'll do the two people behind you and then. My name is Rich Lambert and I live on uh, Pleasant Base Plate. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. You know, if you show that graph again, it looked like there were possibly two routes around Sawyer Cottage. Almost the last one. Sorry. Sorry. You're doing great. <laughs> Yep. All right. So the entrance off of uh, Sawyer Road is below that uh, purple, right? This is the current preservation That's, way right. entrance. So it, it shows that the purple route appears to be more in that site, the cottage's site, as opposed to the two red lines mm -hmm. that seem the, the purple a little bit you're talking about further that south. The purple is the existing right of rights of way. Well, that have been approved. That have been approved or have already been conveyed to the town. We are not proposing near preservation way. And again, this is conceptual. <coughs> Mr. O'Leary didn't see it until tonight, I believe. We showed an alternate going in the red so that it would go towards the school right. yeah. versus going down and coming back up. Okay. So, how do we know which one? If we're voting, how do we know which one? Crappy I tricks. know which one I'd prefer. Not on there. But, yeah, but it's, it's not on there. It's not on yeah. there. You're voting for trap you tear. That that so that being said, the other is what's the uh, in order to hold this hundred and sixty two thousand uh, hundred and sixty two million dollar budget. What's the project going to be? Is it going to be a design build? Is it, be, is it going? I hear all the buzzwords not to exceed value engineering. For, for the state uh, of Maine, you have to do a hard bid process. It's a hard bid process by qualified contractors, I would assume. Yes, yeah. Do they have to be in Maine or can they be just somebody that's qualified close to Maine? Typically, they're qualified with Maine school experience, but sometimes they do have those that are bordering. So that's like Harvey Construction, who's doing a project. In Harvey, Portland. Dudley, I, mean, I can name Rivera. Well, that's what, I mean, that's, what I'm, I mean, that's what I'm getting to. What, what qualifies or who sets up? So it's a great question. So we do a lot of work with the state, and they have a list of qualified contractors that do school projects. That's the same. So is this going to be like a union only yeah. kind of project? This no, is no. open shop type of project. This is a hard bid public bid process. Okay. And so you're going to put allowances in this hard bid? Uh, it has to be those public bid process, but it's by contractors that have school construction experience. Correct. You can't so you can't, you can't be experience. a residential no, you, can't. you can't be a residential builder and say, hey, I'm gonna no, I, I mean I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. Right. Yep. So so you have to have built schools previously, not just one. But schools, right? Previously, to be included uh, on the bid list, right? So, what? Who decides that there's a winner in this bid? Is it the architect? Is it a committee? Is it the designer? I, I mean, who so does that? It's the low. It's the low qualified bid. Right, but who? Who, who takes it apart and makes sure you've got everything involved in it? Yeah, and. And it would be the allowances. So typically, different. yeah, it would be uh, it would committee. be a combination of town staff and the building committee. The building committee. And yep. you have qualified people you feel comfortable with that can go through this whole process. Yep. Because you're talking three or four years down the road, you know, there's cost of material going up and, and that's, unsuitables. Yeah, and, I mean, I, I don't yep. know how many tests you've done in this site, but I would assume that so those you know yeah, we've included things. In the budget, then try to account for escal escalation, right? So, 
it's going to be, we know it's going to be so many years and we've included, I think it's a 4% escalation for each year. It, accounting for the year, the project goes to bid, right? Um, so that's included. There are things that uh, are included to deal with ground improvements um, based on what we know for the site that's uh, been selected. Um, so that's all in the, uh, the, you know, the estimate. Yep. Thanks. Um, you, sir, and then Greg. Curtis uh, Damon, uh, Imperial Lane. I have multiple questions, but just one I'd like an answer to because I haven't been able to find the answer. Why do we not have any state funding for this? When there have been other large mega schools built in this state, why do we not have any state funding? And who is involved for not getting put in? So uh, I'll, I'll speak to that. Uh, essentially, the school committee applied at the last round for state funding. The way state funding works in the state of Maine is there's an application process. The last application was in 2017. The school department put four schools on that application, the three K-2s and the middle school. 74 schools in the state applied. They were down in the 30s and 40s in regards to priority. The state is working through that priority list right now that was developed in 2017. They are on number six. So they fund somewhere and it varies in each application round <coughs> approximately, and it varies 10 schools. And there isn't an, there is not an application round every year, correct? No, so it's 2017 was the last application. There is rumor there could be another one, um, but again, Scarborough's facilities are not hitting the top of the list in the state of Maine for so state funding. Maybe there isn't a problem. So yeah, the I was you don't need the governor's it. office yeah. today and with cost escalations, they uh, are, are at this point thinking uh, no more than two schools they'll be able to fund in, in this round. Mm -hmm. right. The state, the state doesn't look just that. The, the way that the state looks at it, <clears throat> they look at the community's ability to take on a project, which means what's the town's revenue. And the and then the need, right? So if a town towns that have higher revenue levels are not going to be first on the list for funding. Sir in the back. Great. And then Paula. Uh, I just want to circle back to a question that was posed just a little while ago and it was never answered. What's the number? How much funding has gone into the vote yes campaign? I don't know. It's a I think they're filed as a political action committee. So that's something that I think eventually they're going to have to disclose. Yeah. So I, I, don't, I don't think no town money. Yeah. Right. I want to be very clear on that. That is not um, the, it's a, just like there's other political action groups in town, there is a group in town that is, um, I believe they're called the schools, uh, supporters of Scarborough School. I think that's what their official name is. Um, but that is the group that is funding the yes campaign. So that does not come from town taxpayer funds. That comes from funds that they do, they um, collect through donations, just like any other political action group. So it's a so citizen run. Flyers, citizen the run. flyers are they paid for by? Uh, or that's considered education. This is this is the schools from the school, correct? So this is education. Yes. I don't think there's anything that's both. So yes. there's a fine line between what's education and what's. <clears throat> What's convincing? What's lobbying? How much did you pay for your lobbyist? We don't have a lobbyist. Well, your communications right. oh, person, yes. who, if you look at her resume, she's a lobbyist. Her, her, her other work experience is not does have. It does not, it is not regarding this. We we chose her, we selected her because of her experience with educating the public. That was our purpose in hiring her, not because she's a lobbyist or not because she has experience lobbying. Again, um, I think that's you, Neil. Again, uh, to answer, when I answered your earlier question, this was something we were directed to do because the fear was that, or the concern was that the town didn't know what we were asking for and didn't feel like there was enough community outreach done to educate the greater population. So that's why she um, has come in. Her salary, the money she earns, as you know, is um, public, informa public um, information, but she has um, 
to be clear, she has um, donated some of her monies back so that we can print those flyers for educational purposes. If you look back over them, there's not a single one that says vote yes, vote this way, do anything. The purpose is this is a question that we have heard in the community and here is the information about it. Just, just straight information, straight facts. That's all that those flyers that you're looking at right now say. Who pays for her? Taxpayer. Should that comes from, that's a budgeted, yes, a budgeted item. From the town. The from school the school board. board. The town so asked the school board nice. to hire someone. So we pay for her. So, we, yeah. we pay for so her. Yes. is there anyone else who hasn't asked a question that they would like to ask to? So I oh, sorry, at, Paula, we'll come back to you next. I've looked at the, um, the enrollment data and the town had, um, so right now the town, the school enrollment is down 476 students compared to where we were in 2009, 2010. And, um, and we dealt with that. So we're down almost 500 students compared to the peak in 2009, 2010. And we can't find space to put the kids that are coming because I've looked at the elementary schools and there are 38 classrooms, regular classrooms. There are seven additional classrooms at eight corners, four at Blue Point, um, I mean, seven at, at uh, Blue Point. They're used for things like specials, um, special ed. So if you increase class size, I've looked at the enrollment information for 2027, 20, 2028. And figured out that you could increase class size at all the three schools, and but keep it within the goal that it has already been set, and you could accommodate all of those kids, with the exception of probably five kindergarten students. There be have to be five classrooms that had more than one, uh, one more than what the goal is. In addition. <clears throat> There are empty classrooms right now at Wentworth. And if you increase class size at Wentworth to 22 students, there's 40 classrooms at Wentworth. And I looked at what the, at the enrollment, you would have nine, you could have nine empty classrooms. So why are we talking about buying and setting up portables somewhere in a parking lot as, a, you know, I've heard that if this vote, if this referendum fails, it automatically triggers spending millions of dollars. And that is on your website. So there's no automatic triggering of, of spending money in this town, unless it's less than $600,000. So can you correct my misunderstanding or just shine a little light on, you know, why we don't have capacity if we've actually, it's, you know, we're down 500 students right now. Jeff, did you want to take that? I mean, I've, I've been pointing this out at, at the beginning of the why on virtually every single Q and A, we have a thousand kids in portables and have had a, th a thousand kids in portables since 2001. So I, no, no, I don't misunderstand. I, I totally understand our, some of our portables are, 30 years old, they're in, they're, they're at their- They're not in schools. I mean, these aren't designed to be permanent classrooms. I understand. And I'm, they have been. And I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm saying we I mean, can buy- the town, the town, Should we be okay with that? Should we be okay with our kids? Going well, no, we don't have to not. get rid of every no, portable. No, but what I'm saying is that we, if this fails, we can, we'll, we can last another year. We don't need to spend millions on portables set up in a parking lot somewhere. You know, we yeah, can get by another the year. The challenge though is that you're not talking about last yeah, year. Yeah, and Sue, right? Sue, that, that, that wouldn't happen next year, right? I mean, that's- No, no, that's I'm talking that, 27. That... Because the building cycle, it takes so long from the time a referendum is passed and then the planning and, and the actual construction. So if we miss 2027, now we're on 2028. So right. I, all I'm suggesting is that there are some things we could do that would buy us another year. That's not perfect. No one wants, you know. Yeah, and I think that's essentially what's been happening, right? So, so 
barring a long-term permanent solution, we've just been mandating one year to the next. And that's what that's essentially what would be. And that's, that's kind of why we're here, right? I mean, we've been kicking the can down the road I, for, I hear for 20 you. years. I, I'm, all I'm talking I think, about I think we're at the point now where the, the town, look, I mean, we're like the fourth largest tax revenue uh, you know, town in the state of Maine. Um, you're telling me, you're telling the you know, 20, yeah. we have, can I finish? You can interrupt me, folks, quite a bit tonight. So let's just try to let each other talk. I just talk. like to call forward here. Uh, so, like, we're not taxing. Dana, I'm, I'm, I don't know, like, we are not taxing. I am, Dana, all I'm talking about is I'm trying to address what is the, what could we do for another year? Because I have heard and it kind of a, I would characterize it as almost a scare tactic that if this fails, we're totally screwed. And I, I, you know, if it fails, I hope that we continue to find a solution and maybe start with a blank slate. But, but it won't be a complete disaster. We will get by for another year and we won't have to spend tens of millions of dollars, you know, like the oh. cost estimates that you've given on the cost of buying and setting up portables. Come on, we're not going to do that. I, I, well, I, I think we should, you know, the, we should talk about this. Maybe we'll pull it offline because uh, like we didn't. We do need to look at the the numbers that I had. Twenty twelve were eight hundred and sixty six students. Uh, so I don't know where you're getting five hundred. Maybe that's the capacity deficit that you're looking at on the chart. But um, you know, that's that's a good thing to talk about. Regardless, we need as a town to make sure that we're doing the responsible thing, and the responsible thing is not to have our kids continuing to school in Portland um, for no, a lot of reasons. No one is arguing about that. We know that. We know that we need to find a long-term solution. I'm simply addressing the fact that it's it, it won't be you know a disaster. We won't you know have to set up tents somewhere to educate our kids. Well, it, there is a challenge in that you're not able to put more portables on the existing school sites. But well, I think I think Sue I think Sue I, I hear what you're I, I hear what you're saying. You're you're saying if this fails, you know what what's what's the worst that could happen. And it's likely at, at that point, the continuing to triage as we've been triaging will likely be the solution. I don't know what that means financially, but you know, there still needs to be a solution. Now, a vote no doesn't mean whatever that next solution is, it's not gonna be, it's gonna be a lot more expensive because we're delaying the choice. Anytime we delay, costs are gonna go up. They're not gonna go back down. That doesn't mean that the total solution will be right. Well, it the might same, not but be it might, more expensive. Yeah, it might not be more expensive than the 160, but we're going to be paying a lot more for a lesser solution. And so that's that's kind of, in my opinion, so the choice that we're making if we kick the can. One of the suggestions can. that I've heard is to build a school half the size, 550 students, just second and third grade. Put it on the campus. You don't need 20 acres. You you can find a space. You still move the sixth grade, you still move the third grade, and the neighborhood schools are just kindergarten and first. But it's not, you know, it's not being discussed. It, I mean, there, well, I are, think there are other creative options that we have not considered that could very well be less money. Well, and I would, I would. Um, push back um, respectfully a little bit on that, Sue, because they have been considered. The fourth school model in various iterations has been considered multiple times. And when the committee, again, when the committee was, was founded, their goal was not to find the easiest solution, was not to find the cheapest solution, was not to find the, the fastest way to slap up a building. There, there's This committee was charged with finding the best solution for Scarborough, right? And that's what they're doing. So yeah, yeah. you... I do want to address one thing that you said that I um, I want to be clear about. There are no empty classrooms at Wentworth. I want to be very, very clear that that, that is not the case. Sorry, Dana, I didn't mean to interrupt how you. Regular, how many regular classrooms are in use at Wentworth? How many uh, being used for a full class? Well, so it's not, um, it's not for a special. It's not pull back on all of the services that the kids are receiving, though, I guess is my... Like, so you're, so are you suggesting that the Band-Aid solution, we just wouldn't have art or music for? No, no, I'm, I'm absolutely. I'm, I'm asking, because if those class, if those rooms are music rooms and you're suggesting that they could be repurposed as learning spaces, 
then what are we going to do about no, and so, and so, and the reason I bring that up, Sue, is because you said that this sounds like a scare tactic, this idea of portables. To me, saying to an entire room full of parents with young children that if we don't have space to educate the kids, we're taking away music and art is a scare tactic. And so we're trying to do this dance, right, where I don't know what a temporary solution looks like but I don't want my kindergartner in a classroom with 23 other kindergartners. And so we have to be really cognizant of how we talk about some things and labeling some things as scare tactics and other things not. I think one thing that I'll mention too is, you know, I, I know there's uh, the points well taken around, you know, the education. And I think the group has done a lot. I mean, I'll say for the folks here, you know, we're, we're volunteers. I'm a, I'm, I'm a community, community member. I live here in the town. I've given three and a half, almost four years of my time for free to this project to try to uh, come up with a solution. Um, one thing that I take really seriously is making sure that we're not overbuilding. Um, we went through every single space, every single need and said, is this, have we gotten this to the right square footage? We have the minimum that we can deal with, but still not end up with the middle school situation that we had, I don't know how many years ago, where on day one, the thing is full, it's already over capacity, and now the town has spent an inordinate amount of money on something that's, you know, no longer a usable asset or it has a limited life. Um, so we did that in a couple of different ways. One is looking very carefully at the enrollment projections, at the historical enrollment projections. Did the historical enrollment projections match up to what uh, it ended up being? And that gave us confidence in the person that was doing the enrollment projections that we could have confidence in what they were saying would happen going forward. We took all of that, we took the space needs uh, and allocation based on the enrollment, the number of students, what we needed for curriculum. And we very carefully sorted all of that out and we're willing to share that and educate anybody that's interested in it to assure you that this isn't a gilded school, right? It's a big school, but it's what the town needs. Uh, this is a 20 year problem that we've been kicking down the road and, um, well, and, and we can keep kicking it down the road and it's just gonna get more painful. And uh, so. we're into open in 2027. Um, the facilities for the long term are there. And that accounts for current enrollment, the future enrollment projections, all the portables are removed, K to eight, all of our children can actually fit for the first time since the 90s um, in our schools, K so, to 12. Paula, you had your hand up. Did you wanna ask a um, question? Yeah, I, I'm just kind of confused with the modeling. I appreciate the efforts of the modeling that's been going around and I've seen it on Facebook pages and various other websites and it stated that it was 200 a year or 50 cents a day. But yet on the ballot, it says it's $488 a year. So I think that was kind of confusing. Can you explain some of that? Okay, I, I will do my best. I might need Tom's help. So so really what, what is on the ballot and what's in the, the document that you referenced are really two different metrics. So one is essentially we're looking at um, the one that's on the ballot is essentially of your tax bill, how much would you be paying towards the school as part of your tax bill? Um, and so that's where we have that estimate of like the 468. So it's 468 if you have a $400,000 home is, you know, essentially in your total tax bill, $468 would be the school. The other metric is looking at like the total of your tax bill and what does it mean as a percentage increase for the total of your tax bill? And so that's where, when we say, what's gonna be like the net increase to your tax bill? So with this school, if it's approved, even though there's $486 in your tax bill for the school, your total tax bill is actually only gonna go up that $50 for every $100,000 of assessed value. And that's because of what's in the model, where the model has some assumptions in there that mute the impact of the um, full impact of the tax increase or the, the taxes that would need to be collected for the school. 
Did yeah, I do it? Okay. But it's a great question and it's something that we need to clarify because that has been a question that keeps coming up and I think we need to make sure people truly understand that we're, we're comparing apples to oranges when we look at those two things, but that's a that's a tough. It's very confusing, yeah. especially to the voter. I mean, yeah. On the one hand, it makes it look like you know, your, your bill is only going to go up $200 a year <clears throat> for the building project, yet on the ballot it says $400. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that really is, it, yep. it leads to. We can clarify that. That's something that, that, that was brought um, recently that, that was raised. That That's how I was able to answer the question, because we're trying to figure out how do we make sure we, we clarify that. John. Oh, sorry. Yes. And then back, we'll go back to you. You talked about projecting future enrollments and stuff like that. Is there a factor into that, the continued growth rate in residential houses that have been going on in this town for 20 years now? Is that, Do we have a handle on the property that can still be built or that is taken off the market because it's a trust or something like that? because I've seen no control over the building on the part of the, the landowners in Scarborough in the 20 years that I've been living. So that, I mean, that the updated enrollment projection study that was completed, um, which is posted and been online since, I, I think it was, was it, um, I don't remember when January. it was presented, January, January uh, has multiple scenarios based on um, the rate of development in town. Um, and so when we looked at, uh, as part of this, the graph that um, Dana was referring to as part of a, a presentation tonight about the enrollment projections, we took in, um, there, was, there was like a, a best, best guess, best case scenario, but there were multiple different uh, enrollment projections um, that used, like, like with the financial one on the tax impact, that used like multiple different um, you know, again, you're projecting out into the future, but based on X amount of development um, in town, this is what it would mean for potential enrollment and at what ages. And so they, they look at all contemplated development. So like even the downs is taken into example, the beacon development taken into uh, taken or taken into account. Um, and what third threes. Yeah, and then, so that's all included and then um, they actually work with the planning department. Um, so Autumn uh, was, well, it was, I forget who the, who was previously, it was Autumn at the time, I think. Was the, uh, anyway, so work with the planning department to understand what mm -hmm. contemplated in terms of units, uh, whether it be a house or an apartment or uh, an office building even, to get an impact on what, what that means for enrollment in the school. Um, so th what I will say is that person that did the study, and I, I related to this earlier, when we started to do the planning, we said, look, we need to make sure that whatever was done previously held true, right? And so we went and we took the old enrollment study and we overlaid it with what the actuals were. And when I started doing this, I, I started like plotting the dots and I'm like, man, this is like right on top of every one that uh, she had projected. So it gave us a lot of confidence in being able to feel good about what was truly expected um, going forward uh, in, in, you know, the quality of the information. So um, I think in Alicia. I just was wondering if there was anything built in for like within that 160 million that will help like elderly with their meds and they can't afford it or fixed incomes or single parents who are just making it by. And I know that we're all taxpayers, absolutely, but we're not all in the same bracket, let's be honest, okay? So I'm just wondering what happens. Like if you get taxed out, is it move them out, move someone new in that can't afford it? Is that fair to the people that have lived here? I'm just saying, taking into consideration that we all don't have a huge amount of money, you know, and we have lived in this town for a very long time. Was that considered? Because I have many elderly in my neighborhood that are on fixed incomes. Their taxes aren't in escrow. They're paying their property taxes out of pocket. And they're not protected anymore by the state of Maine. So then what? What do we do? Anyone have an answer for that one? By any chance? So I, I, I think, sorry. Right. Yep. Exactly. I 
still would like an answer, but we can go back to Sawyer I, Road. Absolutely. I, I'm happy to chat with you about like our budget process because right now the council <laughs> sets an annual goal to try and keep that tax rate around 3% to try and keep it at a minimum as best we can. Um, and in the modeling, what it projects is that with this debt, it does in the first 10 years of bonding increase it on average to be about 3.7%. So means there is a, lot a, to a lot of people. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think that's something that we have to figure out as a community, like how can we do something about it? Again, I don't, I don't think we're gonna solve that with the school solution to your point. It's, it's something that we probably need a community dialogue on to figure out how can we, I see Jean, Jean Marie in the back who at one point increased the senior um, yeah. tax credit in Scarborough. It may be time to look at that again and see Absolutely. what we need to do there. That, that's Jeff, I'm Jean Marie Katarina, 311 Gorm Road. I'm also one of the town council. Um, I worked to get you, you, all of you, the $750 senior tax credit. Um, we were probably the first municipality to do that. Now others are copying us. I would uh, remind you that you need to apply for that. This is not the state one, this is the Scarborough one. And I believe that the applications may be due this week if you meet the criteria. But anyway, um, both Nick McGee and I have been talking about how can we look at increasing that because that's cash back to those who qualify at the end of the year. So, you know, you pay taxes, but then you get a refund back in cash that hopefully will, will, will help out. And I am sorry about the state program, but that was a total screw up yeah, to begin yeah. with. But anyway, I'm not gonna go it's into just that. I would, I would, John, where do we have access to computers and that information and applying for that? And have well, family applying that to apply, you just go into town hall. Is that the deadline? So this week? let's, it may be. I would I would suggest anyway. Alicia, you connect with Jean Marie, yeah. maybe and, to. And get John, some. when are we finding this? Until I'm I'm here to wait until we don't have any more questions. It, it's up to other people if they yeah any questions. Sawyer Road. Sawyer Road. We'll go back to Sawyer Road. Carol's been waving his hand for a while, and then we'll come to you guys. Carol. So, so uh, I I can yield one question because I'm gonna I've got. Uh, um, um, so, look at you guys. There's no question that we know that a lot of you volunteer all of this time and you work really hard, okay? And the taxpayers deserve real clarity on what the cost is going to be. So, I have an assignment for Tom. I'm going to just, I use, I'm going to use the numbers that are available to us for these meetings. Uh, and, and the answer to this gentleman's question here. Um, we, we are talking about $160 million like it's like, it's too easy to talk about. $160 million, okay, we are gonna be responsible for $274, $275 million over 30 years. The interest on that loan is going to be a one hundred fourteen million nine hundred ninety-one dollars. So that's at four percent for thirty years. It requires a payment from our town of seven hundred sixty-three thousand dollars, eight hundred sixty-four cents payment uh, per month. Okay, over thirty years. So I'm asking Tom, if I ran some numbers to pay for this debt, this, this, this debt, our current debt service is somewhere around 5 million, is it? Is our debt service about 5 million per year? Uh, closer to six this year. Close to six. So this, this project's gonna drive our debt service another $9 million. Uh, now, now, I'm not trying to point fingers or to bring out anything other than the fact that we all have to pay for this. The schooling, which is very important. I wish I could find that. Well, Kara, I, th I think to your so, point, it's, it's so not. Over the next, our, 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 we try to hold our tax mill rate percentage increase to 3%. Last year to this year, 
is 3.77%. If I take the, that mill rate of 51539 that was last year, and bring it up through to 2028, okay? And you all know what your evaluation is. So if my numbers are close, Rob, our, our mill rate in 2028 will be $18.92. That's an five, that suggests that five years from now, all of us in this room are going to be paying 23% more on our taxes than we are today. That's, that's the reality. Now, that could be changed if we reduce debt or find a way to pay for that school. The other thing we should do post haste is if we lose this a year, I say we take that year and pay ourselves some money by getting the best possible site, the lowest possible cost to do the job, and keep taxes in line. There's no way, no way we can spend $276 million and keep within a 3% budget line. We're already at 3.77, and in years 2027 and 2028, it's going to be 5.7% back to back years. So, I'm not arguing or debating with anybody. I'm asking our town managers and manager and town council, okay, to be, I'm not gonna say responsible. You've got to show us that the money we're spending can be held to a minimum. And you all put that number out there yourself, the 3%. I'm only following your numbers. There's no way. We can pay for this project and stay with that, that goal. So there, as I mentioned earlier, it excludes impact fees, which aren't even contemplated in the model that will help to pay for the school. On all fairness, and, you talk about and, all you want. And, not, not, let well, me, let me, let me, no, let me you, 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 you asked, you asked the comment. Yeah, we want to, we need to switch gears, but I will just close yeah, with, a yeah, well, let, I told this gentleman he could go and then we'll go to you, Paul. I'm confident that, that the town has the tools available that even in the current model that we can do things to help keep that tax rate lower with, model keep us within with impact fees. And then we also haven't talked about how we structure the debt. Our bond council, I don't know if I'm using the right word, our financial advisor actually was suggesting that, you know, there's ways that we can make choices with how we structure the payments and the timing to be able to actually even reduce it further. So, and the council through the annual budget process has the opportunity to shift investments make different choices. So we, we are in a good position as a community to try and get as close to that 3% as we can. It's not gonna happen. You know, I, I respectfully you're, disagree. You're, you're we, we need to go, we need to go oh, to on, another I, person. Hold on, Let yeah. me just conclude, please. Let me conclude. Okay, you can conclude, but you have 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah, 30 okay, seconds, okay. please. Um, between now and November, it would be reasonable to ask that show the numbers until to 2028 where our tax rate will not be 23 percent higher in 2028 than it is today you need you have the responsibility of bringing the data the information to the tax Carol, we, that, that information is in the model and that model can answer that question for any taxpayer who wants to go, that the wants to go and find it yeah. Your responsibility is bring to bring that information to us, John. Yeah, and we have that in the ballot. There's information that's going around to um, talking around with John. Uh, Carol, I think there might be a specific thing you're looking for us to answer that we can always create another I'm, FAQ I'm, I'm with another data. Way that you can get a yes on your vote in November. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the information. Sawyer. Sawyer okay, Sawyer Road. Back Fight to Sawyer Road. Road. Thank you, Carol. Fight 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 Sawyer Road. Road. Is your Sawyer Road? I, I don't have a question at all. I, I just want to point out that we've, we've had seven Q and A sessions prior to this one. Carol is the only person I see in this room that has shown up to any of them, and we have five more after this. We've had two of them about the cost and tax impact, uh, and this one was a special session called just for Sawyer Road residents. Yeah. We've gone way off the rails. Yeah. So let's just finish it out. It's yeah. 30 at night. Let's finish it on Sawyer Road. If I can, just a quick comment. Thank you, Megan, for your input. Because without you, I really wouldn't have known about this. Go home. But I have lived in Sawyer Road for 25 years. All of my children have gone to schools from the little school right up to the high school. 
Last year, two years, we had to deal with 114, which was a debacle. Put islands in the middle of the road that mean nothing to traffic lines. So it blocks up 114. They come across Soil Road. I've had mishaps within my own family where people were going to that little community that's behind the, this, the village back there, right? Eastern Trail. Way in the back that nobody ever goes to because we don't even know it's there. I don't even remember the name of it. But the point of it is, is when 114 was all torn up for two years, it went down Sawyer Road as a cut through. <laughs> well, Sawyer Road, go Sawyer Road. I've, countless times I've gone across the road to get the mail out of the mailbox and almost get run over because people are cutting through and they don't even live on Sawyer Road or in the community itself. Every one of them that were there when I first moved here, Alicia, her family, we've all lived in the same community for 25 plus years, right? I'm not a Mainer, I'm not from Scarborough, but I've lived here for 25 years. The problem that I have is they cut through there with a, with a less care of the speed limit. I'm standing in the road getting my mail out of the mailbox and a guy literally aims his truck at me. I'm standing in the road getting the mail out of the mailbox. He didn't slow down. He didn't, maybe I ought to go over to the left just a little bit. He had a bullseye point on me as I was getting the mail out of the road. Good chances are he didn't even live in that community, right? I value the park, I value this building, it's safe for us. But when you can't even get your mail out of the mailbox because somebody's cutting through here or they run your dog over or they have elderly people on the sidewalk and they're racing down the street, what point is that? to make that big change down there on the other end. It's gonna affect Megan's family. It's gonna affect all those people on track view. And you just, you said it tonight, an eight foot sidewalk. There's an eight foot sidewalk on 114 you could drive a, road, a car on. Why would it have to be that big? If you need to put a sidewalk, there's one right outside of my house, less than four feet wide. And everybody walks down my right in front of my house every single day. So it's just it just appalls me that we're talking safety, we're talking to elderly people walking on the sidewalk, and we want to put an eight foot sidewalk so somebody could almost drive their car up one. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see, Noah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Noah Nye from 16 Village Street. Uh, appreciate what you're doing. It's, uh, you know, it's a good meeting to have. Perhaps not the easiest. Uh, Mr. Pong, question for you. Is it true that Sawyer Road currently experiences 3,000 cars a day? I mean, you can ballpark if, you, if you're able. I believe if you looked at the DOT, AADT, it's approximately 1,100 cars a day. 1,100, okay. Uh, and so I just wanted to let that number sink in. I thought it was more, but- um, It will be when the school is built. Right, and so the point I'm making here is, I think you had mentioned upwards of 2,000 cars an hour. That would be the capacity of oh, the road. Still, I mean, I mean, we're not aiming for that, but I, no. I'm glad you said that. Um, do you know about how many per hour or, or even per day um, all in and down in the school might be, or is that too much speculation? I would say that's in the speculation side at the intersection, the proposed track view intersection, the two-way traffic, and the AM peak hour would be in the order of about 375 vehicles. And that's per hour? That's in the peak hour. So the peak hour, I was supposed to clarify, because the peak hour, when you say <laughs> peak hour, AM peak hour, 
so traffic tends to go in waves, right? So AM, is a, there's a ramp and then it drops off during the day. And then in the PM, there's a ramp or it, it may not always be specific to uh, a time of day. It could be specific to something that's happening on that road. Um, so a shift change at a factory, right? Maybe it's a three o'clock. Um, and so when we say peak hour, that's the hour at which the most cars are experienced on that roadway. Then if they further break it down into, if it's an intersection, right-hand turn, left-hand turn, straight, incoming, outgoing, and it's broken down. So you, you further break down the direction of travel uh, on that. So when you say AM peak hour, that's the peak number of vehicles during uh, a specific hour in the morning and the PM peak hour is this, the peak number of vehicles uh, during a specific hour. It does not mean that you're going to experience 300 cars continuously every hour. It's a peak and then it falls off. And yeah, then that, that all makes sense. Yep. I, I appreciate what you're saying. Yep. That, that I, I did understand. I just, I wasn't sure what the numbers would be. Um, yep. And of for a TMP review, that's triggered after <clears throat> 99 cars per hour. Correct. Okay. I know you mentioned that, that was going to be triggered. Um, but I guess I would also just add that if this ends up going to the living property instead of track view, I mean, I, I, that's good because uh, I suppose some families are less impacted, but it does not change the shortcut arguments that I've made unless it goes to 114, which it is not really been indicated that that's in stone yet or anything really. So that, that argument still is uh, present, I would just say. Thank you. Is it Sawyer Road specific? It is Sawyer okay. Road. I just was wondering, I know there's a peak and all this and that, but do you also take into consideration all of the cuts throughs that could come from Scarborough Downs through? You know, like people might want to you know, midday, not everyone has a work hour in the morning or coming home in the afternoon. That seems like it's gonna be a busy part of town on the industrial side. That's also a cut through for them. Was that number taken into consideration or possibly like within your, your thoughts and your process of all that onto that Sawyer be, Road? That would be <clears throat> addressed as part of the traffic study After. once the location of the driveway is identified. So what's being reported is, is school specific. We have confidence in, but additional traffic will undoubtedly be included when it comes time for application. People cut through the park, they go down through Wentworth, and then they go out from there. That's not school traffic. That I can tell you for a fact. <coughs> so this in, terms of new, <coughs> in terms of new traffic being generated from this school, is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. This school is in the Downs, and that traffic from the Downs could be using that school as a throughway. True, undoubtedly. Mm -hmm. It will be included when it comes time. Sorry. For hey, or did I miss someone? Yeah, hey, I Megan just, and then in the back. Get I know. I, um, I guess for us, we need to know, are you going to use eminent domain and take part of our property? And for us, I know where our property line is. <laughs> we don't need to. No one wants to see property taken from themselves. I know none of you up there would want it to happen to you. None of you would want 200 foot turn lanes on either side of your homes, especially if you own part of the road that we're talking about, which we do. Um, can you publicly state that you will not use public eminent domain to complete this road access on track view terrace? I think voters want to know because that's part of what they're voting on. Do I live in a town that takes families' properties to do their projects? I think it's an important thing that needs to be public. It, it's available to the town. I'm not aware that we've used it um, anytime recently. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't have a vote in the matter, but it's certainly available. But for this project, yeah. not historically, for this project and for specifically our property and track I think for specifically for your property, if there's a way we can, um, you know, in my mind, find an option, if, if it is through TrackView to not have to 
you know, use your property. I think that's an option that I would support. It would likely cost taxpayers a little bit more, which would likely <laughs> re result in some value engineering for the school project. But if we can avoid eminent domain, you know, to me, that would be the goal. The goal would be to avoid it. Um, and that's something that I, yeah, that's, that's a bar that. that I think we don't, we don't want to have that's to. The goal through the yeah. entire project is to yeah. minimize that and a lot of other impacts. Um, are you always 100% successful at eliminating 100% of the impact everywhere? Um, we haven't been with this project, obviously, because there's, you know, otherwise it would be 100% support for it. Um, I, don't, I don't know that you would ever get there, but uh, the goal is to minimize it. Jack Fay from Fleptine Mulberry Lane. <laughs> Recently, the town council submitted a, uh, there was a request to change VR4, mm -hmm. which was a village residential district, and make it part of the CPD. Mm -hmm. And they forwarded that on to the planning board. And the planning board has um, standards, and section 14 of the village residential districts, which was adopted July 19th of this year. Item three, shall not provide or create vehicular access from Sawyer Road to serve non-residential development located outside of the VR district. I don't know why they specifically said no vehicular access on Sawyer Road, but they did. The planning board listened to the arguments and I believe the planning board recommended it not to be brought forward. I think that's been changed. The CPD automatically replaced that thing. So now there can be vehicular access. Why did that happen? I mean, I'd like to know why it was in there specifically in July of this year and why it was voted out, even though the planning board didn't. So there's going to be, I don't, we might need to take that offline because I'm, I'm not tracking with some of the information that you're, you're you want sharing. I, is that an email? No, someone. this is off the section 14 of the uh, VR, the, the standards for vehicular uh, I'm not residential there's, districts. There's been any recent changes yeah. to the VR4, so I, I, I'd be pleased to chat further the with VR4, you. VR4, you just added VR4 to the CPD. You sent that on. The council hasn't taken action no. on that yet, so that was something only that the planning board Oh. Has looked at so the council hasn't formally had that. That will be at our October 18th meeting, but we'll be talking that item. So we don't have all that information. Sorry, yet. I'll see you again. Yeah, you will see. come on October 18th if you want to hear I'll anything about that. And the other thing, the young lady who said there was a scare tactic, I think maybe you should take a look at the flyers you handed out. What happens if it doesn't pass? The town will need to use millions of taxpayer dollars to proceed with an emergency temporary. That's a little scary, you know, that if it doesn't pass, you're going to pull millions of dollars down. And the last thing I have, because my wife wants to go home, is $200 a year increase. So I'll be paying $800, and I'm following your numbers. We know we're going to have a new evaluation. I'm going to be paying $800 a year more in taxes before the first kid walks into the school, basically. I know you don't have to borrow 160 million all at once. Yeah. Okay. I heard that part. Ma'am? Well, my first question was about busing about Sawyer Road, which is for this hour. hour. Um, a couple of real quick questions, and you can probably answer with one word. Okay. I was under the impression that in order to get the Downs property, to buy the Downs property, we had, you had to include an access over track view. Is that correct? Correct. No. So, well, quite. sorry, no. sorry. No, we, had, we have to Not provide uh, for Easterly. easterly access mm -hmm. and track view was one of the options being considered. So that at the time, up until just last week, it was the only option, correct? It was the option that had been explored and priced out. So you just so found they, out about the cottages last week. So that's that's something. So what what happened in the, the site selection? Um, the committee at one point, prior to making the choice for the site, when we we're looking at sites, yeah, I don't need to know there, that. I just yeah. need to know question. Yes, there were options. Type, 
Trackview is tied to the downs. So you Trackview, have that Trackview owns the downs. Yeah. Or sorry, the downs. <laughs> right. The sorry. downs has a roadway easement that they own that is adjacent right. okay. to Trackview. I understand that. Okay, next question, real quick, real quick. Um, You said when you were talking about um, off-site um, off costs that you had had, you had worked on the downs on cost sharing. I was wondering if you had also worked with the landowners on track view on cost sharing and what you could do for them and what they might be expecting. Have you worked with them as much as you worked with the downs to acquire their, their, their rights? So we engaged with the owners starting in July when we started to engage with um, the track view residents to make them so aware. When did you start to, to engage with the downs? That July? was in January. So we started in so January. So you did not start at the same time, even though you knew that it was connected? Well, we weren't sure if we had a deal. Okay. That right. we were There's absolutely no expectation for any property owner participation in whatever improvements we may make in the track view if that's the choice. Yeah. Um, we've plan from day one and continue to to uh, front all of those expenses and in fact provide some enhancements that aren't really necessary for the project but we think okay we I, I, I get that you got all, all the, lots of balls up in the air that you mm -hmm. have to juggle with and I appreciate that I know you I know you work hard and I know you're trying to to deal with everything and there's a lot to deal with um question um you talked about the sewer Lines not being connected on one side. 95. Yeah, so so is it all going to come down track view? Or well, that good the, as part of the alternatives analysis, looking at alternate sites, there's no sewers west of the turnpike. So where will it go now? So that has nothing to do with the downs. So it's where will the sewer yeah. lines be connected for the school? We're the school will go through the downs to Hagas Parkway to the treatment plant. So it'll go to Hagas Parkway. Okay, yep. good. Thank you. And um, are you aware that the fire engines come off Sawyer Road and that's their access both directions? So you're willing to tie that up with multiple school buses and extra traffic and everything? How many of you have, have driven down Trackview Road, Trackview Lane? You all driven down Trackview Lane? Yep, everybody's hand did not go up. It's a nice little short street it's brick a, a dirt road nice houses quiet shady very nice i feel like i feel like you're trying to be a bully to say to the little guy we can take this because we're just a few of you and there's more of us and we have the power and you don't and i don't think that's fair I think it's a nice community. And if you're gonna take part of their land, you should at least talk to them, work with them, compensate them, give them free taxes for eat forever. Give them, um, give them $300,000 a piece. I don't know. I think you need to do, if you're gonna take their land and devalue their property, you need to do something for them and work with them and let the town know that you're doing that because otherwise you look like you look like the school bully. And that's not a bad, that's that's not a good look for a school committee. It's not a good look at all. I drove my granddaughter home from middle school today. And I said, because I just live Mulberry Plain, it's just on the other side of the park. I said, we're gonna take a quick detour. And we went down track view. Now we didn't go all the way down. This is one place you can't go past. And we looked around and I said, what do you think about this? And she said to me, she said, looks like a really nice place to live. I take, I, I think it's sad. I think it's sad. Mm -hmm. That's the way I feel. And I think on your ballot, you have any hope of, of anything of getting this school issue passed. The library didn't pass, they're huge. Everybody loves libraries. Everybody loves schools. I'm a teacher, I used to be a teacher. 
um, you need to explain and you need to write the ballot. If you need to rewrite it and reprint it, do that. <laughs> it needs to be done in such a way that it's clear what you're really asking for, what you can't change. Like if this commitment to use that space, you need to make it clear. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. So thank you for letting me ask a couple questions mm -hmm. about saw your road because my first question was in the previous hour and it was on that saw your road. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for staying. Final question is I do have to get home to my kiddos. Um, are there any other school entrances that go down a residential road with homes on that main street? Because I'm pretty sure that Pleasant Hill is on a main road. Um, Eight Corners is on a main road. Um, Blue Point's on a main road. You have access to Wentworth off a main road with no, you're going to go down a residential road, but it would be the only school that is, you could go down a residential road. No other ones do. Is there any other consideration like going with 114 instead of track view? Like, can we do that and not bother those people on that private road? Because I don't, I've never had a major school like, drive through and I lived on that road, my kids would not be playing in my yard for safety measures because you never know who's going through and out and all this and that. Yeah, that was one of the ones that Al shared in the a couple hours ago. So well, I know. Was, the yeah. So there's the Gorham, yeah, there is the Gorham connection. That, that cuts could, through the new neighborhood that I'm building a home in for my family. That Mark going, was surprised uh, about tonight, mm -hmm. which he didn't know about, which I don't think will sit well with him, but. That's not for me to say. That's his own opinion. But now you're cutting through another neighborhood. Yeah. I think what Mark, I don't want to speak for Mark. I think he was saying based on the image, there was a different point that I think he was expecting to yeah. see in the image. Was going off the back of the property, not through the property. Yeah. He was expecting, yeah. yeah. So that's where very work out. Back with what yeah. was purchased, yeah. not through the actual neighborhood itself where we're building. So that's my, I've lived on Sawyer Road my whole life. Like I know how that road can be and is. I've seen dogs get hit. I've seen people almost get hit. I, it does not need that traffic. And I don't want that traffic through a new neighborhood that I'm investing in with my three young children. Would you? Would you want to raise your kids, John, on a busy street or have all that traffic coming through your neighborhood or any of you guys? Probably not. So. All right, all right. I live on a busy road. <laughs> you live on a main road, but like, would you want that if you lived in a neighborhood with that traffic coming through your neighborhood with your kids in your yard? Just to be clear, the conversations we've had with Mr. Leary have to do with him <clears throat> being open and perhaps willing to redesign the back portion, the unbuilt portion of the subdivision, and to avoid, to the greatest extent possible, all the existing homes. There's, I don't know, eight or ten. But I've talked to him myself because he's my builder. And I think tonight was a big surprise for him. He wasn't expecting what you guys presented. But I can't speak for him. I can just see his facial expressions. But it, and you even, I think you said this is the first time that he's been hearing it this evening. And your house is that back to go. Oh. The, the alignment may be different than we talked about. But in concept, it was certainly in keeping with all the conversations we had. Okay. And I spoke no, to I him as recent as this afternoon. Him and I should have a conversation as well. I appreciate your time. I think, I think that the, the traffic and transportation around the middle school, though, is really serious. That's going to be an accident back there. You wouldn't be able to get to it. Kids right. Part, part of the project includes an emergency. Well, I mean, that, that's, that's something that could be done now. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's really, it's a zoo. It's awful. I mean, I've, I've been checking my kids up at Wentworth for a couple of years. This is the first time I've gone all the way back in there. I was surprised. Any other questions? No, thank you guys for staying late and for participating. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone online. Thank you for your letters. Inviting me to come.